Hi guys, welcome back. I'm um, here with uh, a new guest, and it's it's not quite chalky. It's uh, it's dog. Uh, how you doing? I'm pretty good, man. I just uh, woke up to cast. Figured it'd be fun. All right. Well, it should be. It is fun. Uh, we'll yeah, start exactly. off pretty slow here. Uh, eventually, we're going to get into the Tempo Storm versus Cloud Nine match. Uh, that should be an interesting one. Um, both of these um, both of these teams kind of in the, in the middle of the pack ish, kind of near the bottom, I guess. It's a nice way yeah. of putting it, Crip. <laughs> yeah. Kind of yeah. near the bottom. Kind of near the bottom. Uh, Cloud9 is a 1-1 one one record with 9 game wins, and Tempo Storm has a 0-2 record uh, with 8 game wins. Uh, but we've seen uh, a lot of good stuff from, uh, from both teams, so it's, um, it's kind of hard to uh, count uh, either of them out here. Uh, a lot of close games in this tournament format, and uh, as, as we were on break, Dog, you were mentioning that the, the format's a, a bit strange. How do you feel about this format as, um, uh, as one of the players? Okay, so you were like asking me my uh, win-loss or whatever, and uh, I feel like this format kind of funnels you into losing more games, uh, just because like generally you want to put your better matchups first. So you like look at their lineup and you're like, okay, these are good. These are good matchups. So you put those mm -hmm. people in first, and then you uh, send in the guy last who has the worst matchup. So he's obviously going to lose the most games, but he has the most chances also. So he's going to be like losing a ton, a ton of games, and hopefully he doesn't get discouraged because like then he just like throws the whole thing. But basically, one person is going to have a really bad record in this format, and I think that's been the case with a lot of these games, so mm -hmm. or a lot of these series at least. Did you get uh, a chance to catch uh, some of what just uh, went down here with the show losing six? <laughs> six games? Yeah, yeah. I, I did. And that's, I mean, his wasn't so much bad matchups. I think it might have been draws or something. But, um, yeah, this format definitely, like, kind of makes people have bad records, I feel like. Or at least one person makes them feel, feel bad. Yeah, but it's a team league. I mean, it, it, if you go down but your team wins, that's, that's good enough, yeah. right? Exactly. You better you better hope you have a supportive team. That would be very depressing if your team started berating you and you just went like zero six or something. Oh my goodness, I would, I would cry. <laughs> well, I mean, Mon Monk is probably uh, writing up the release contract for show as we speak. So um. <laughs> we kid, we kid. But I think in general, I think uh, pretty much every team that I've heard so far, like every every time I talk to one of these players, they always talk about when they're losing. Um, their team is always very supportive. Like. RDU talked about it when he was uh, he wasn't doing very well in the first week. Of course, we all support Savit in the last week, and I'm sure we'll support uh, Show this week. Also, just um, Trump, his team has also been very supportive. Like Dog, I'm sure you've been very supportive, <laughs> right? We've seen that in uh, Kibler's articles that he just says, "Yeah, we know we realize like we decided to line up together, and it's not Trump's fault; it's the team's fault that you guys like just took a loss." No, we told them one in six wasn't value, so to get all value down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, we made the decision together to bring, like, a deck, and, I mean, he played it well, he played his best, no one can be mad at anyone, so, it's just, uh, well, it goes. Well, losses will happen, uh, some people like to see those, so I guess we have a show for everyone. Uh, before we get into the games, though, uh, before we, uh, go on into more of, uh, the matchups here and the class selections and all that, uh, we have a pretty cool player spotlight for you guys to see. Uh, I believe it's uh, hyped, hype dog. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's check this. that out. We'll come back. We'll get into the games. Hi, my name's hyped. I've been playing Hearthstone since beta. I've been playing for Tempest Storm for about a year uh, in tournaments, and I stream occasionally. I'm most known for Miracle Road back in Gadgets and Days. I've also been known for playing a lot of Freeze Mage, or sort of bringing it back. The format of the Team League is really interesting. Um, it's something new I have to think about. Um, it's sort of like the NEL League that Temple Storm's been playing in a little bit, so we might have a small edge there. Although, since it's only six decks rather than all nine classes, uh, we don't get to bring over some of the cool tactics that the Chinese use to take advantage of the weak classes. Um, but maybe some of that will come into play. And the secret to having very cool hair is to constantly be insecure about it and always adjusting it whenever you see your reflection to make sure it's just right. To all my fans, stay hyped. Some pretty good stuff there. Um, yeah, I, I called Hype Hype Dog uh, right before we went into that, and that's uh, because I, I raided with him in World of Warcraft for several years, and that's that was his like nickname in uh, in our scene then. 
And it looks like he is uh, going to open up here for Tempo Storm. It's going to be hyped on Warrior for Tempo Storm and Strife Crow on Paladin from Cloud9. Uh, and I was talking about um, before the last series started how Paladin hasn't had too great of a record. I hadn't realized the record was as disastrous as it was for Druid. Um, but certainly it hasn't been impressive for Paladin either. Yeah, that Warrior. being said, uh, that being said, Paladin, this is like by far the best matchup. This matchup in um, in Black Rock Mountains, it's actually eighty four percent for the mid range Paladin or for just Paladin against Warrior, uh, because it's we know that typically Hype likes to run Control Warrior. He doesn't run Patron Warrior. So if it were if Hype were actually just suddenly decided to run Patron today, it'd suddenly be like switched around basically. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's interesting he chose to bring Control Warrior over Patron. Oh, wow. Uh, or he didn't. Go. There we <laughs> go. Minds. That's good. That's, That's interesting. That's a good matchup. <laughs> yeah, now it's like a, it's flipped all the way around because um, hyped in the last two weeks, he was playing Control Warrior every single time. So it's interesting that he just decided to switch it up. Hat is one of those players that has a very quick learning curve. So when it comes to picking up new decks, even the more complicated ones, uh, he's certainly able to do it on a, on a very uh, on a very amazing level, I would say. Uh, haven't played games with him in the past. Uh, he's one of those like very very quick learners, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, if we just top top level patron play from him today. Yeah, he was actually running Harrison, and he didn't keep it. That's kind of interesting. I mean, I, I assume you want to use it for like just the card draw, but. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think maybe he thinks it's aggro. Maybe he's like looking for whirlwinds and stuff. Who knows? I don't think he thinks it's aggro. I think, um, well, I, I didn't. I didn't quite uh, get a chance to compare the uh, the class lineups to last week's. But last week, Strife Crow also brought Paladin, and it was this. Uh, I actually think it's like a double zombie Chow like control oh Paladin. My <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I think most teams these days they're running the exact same five classes. But the sixth one is kind of just up for debate. And in this case, Cloud9, they thought that Druid just wasn't in the top six. And instead, they're running Paladin instead. Hmm. That's interesting. Do you have... Uh, I, know, I know you're pretty good at these statistics, Monk. Uh, I didn't, I didn't re realize you quite had uh, such a library. But uh, do you know how Paladin has been performing in this tournament so far? Uh, I don't have that exactly, but it's been performing pretty badly, especially just because Trump has been performing badly with it. And in the first week... RDU performed pretty badly with it, with uh, just aggro Paladin. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, Strife Crow, I think he's been doing really well. He got a win off of uh, Savitz's Druid last week, and I think he got a win. Um, he, he's, I think he's like actually 2-0 with Paladin in this, in uh, Archon Team League. Yeah, I didn't I mean, realize that. I guess that's a good reason to bring it back. It mostly just comes up to like what matchups you get, and it's kind of just like trying to get lucky with it. I mean, I lost to Strife Crow's uh, Paladin whenever I played Freeze Mage. And, like, I don't know. I mean, it was a bad matchup, obviously, but I kind of drew poorly. So, like, you can steal wins with it. It's just, I don't think Paladin has that many good matchups, so I'm not really sure if it's, like, the mm -hmm. class to bring right now. But, I mean, if it's working for him, all the more power to him. Well, I think it definitely makes a lot of sense for Strife Crew, or at least for Cloud9, to bring Paladin to this series. Because Hyped is known as, um, he's been playing Control Warrior the past few weeks. And, like, as you said, the matchup is just flipped around when you bring Patron Warrior. So on the other side of things, I think it's very smart for Hyped to bring Patron Warrior instead of Control Warrior, at least this week. What do you think about the, the play we just, we just saw Hype make? I think um, a lot of players uh, watching could consider uh, the, playing the Acolyte and then playing the Coin uh, Emperor the following turn. Uh, probably a play they would often expect from a Grim Patron deck, just uh, flooding a bunch of cards, making them discounted, and then, you know... Going out. Uh, what do you think about this play with a dust bite? Do you think it's maybe the right one, or is it maybe a bit overly defensive? Um, I think it wasn't really for the defense. It was more to get the draw off the acolyte early, because like right, you don't want to emperor unless you have like a really good hand. Because the the way he's trying to win this is he's just gonna go for like the big wombo combo where he does like twenty to face or like forty to face in one turn, uh, mm -hmm. instead of just you know going for the patron board where he like you know might get a quality consecrated or something. So he's trying to get like a ton of cards that are actual like combo pieces before rather than just a number of cards. Yeah, and he wanted to draw at least one more off Acolyte. That's why he did the Death Bite, so we could set it up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we we have seen the the uh, 
the, the 10 to face, the 20 to face, the 40 to face. But I think we've also seen the 60 to face. That's been <laughs> my favorite one. Yeah, unfortunately not in the last match um, between Sho and uh, RDU. Yeah. Reporting for duty. Yeah. All right. Um, well, Strife Crow just uh, playing stuff to stick on the board. Uh, he's basically known for this type of gameplay all, all from the beginning of, uh, of his Hearthstone career. Just uh, playing the, the mid-range, playing the, uh, the control game very successfully. It's interesting he played the... I guess you don't really need Aldor much. I was going to say it's interesting he played the uh, Aldor over the BGH. Yeah, he probably just feels the... I mean, the only thing you're really going to Aldor that's going to make a much of a difference is a frothing. That yeah, and you could BGH, BGH it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Hype loses both his death uh, death bites here. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, and you really want to play an Emperor into a creature that kills it directly. I think you can use the Whirlwind if you want. I think he wants to save it for the Emperor. But he might go like Acolyte Slam Whirlwind. That deals with it pretty effectively. You could also just go Acolyte in a Rage armor up. Or Acolyte in a Rage and then Slam also just to get the extra card draw and cycle. Um, but yeah, I think he's basically he's just playing to win this through the Wombo combo. So, let's see. Yeah. The, the Death Spite being gone, though, kind of uh, makes that a much more difficult situation, though, it feels. Yeah, he still has uh, two Whirlwind effects uh, in his hand and at least two others in his deck, so I don't think he's feeling too bad right now. Let's go with the Emperor. Yeah. I think he's, he's doing this because he, has, he feels like he has enough combo pieces in his hand. I think like basically Those most of the cards in his hand combo are pieces. exactly every card, exactly. Every card is a combo piece, except the acolyte, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. So from from Strikecrow's position, do you really want to be like putting down a Belcher to feed maybe you know frothings or more, or uh, patrons and more damage? And do you even want to hero power, or do you just want to like drop Sylvanas? Hmm. Yeah, I feel like any turn where you open board Sylvanas is a good one against the Grim Patron. It's true. Yeah, it's typically somewhat difficult for a Patron Warrior to deal with. Um, they can't just like fill the board up with um, Patrons because then the Sylvanas will threaten to steal it. Um, but generally, I I kind of like Loth up a bit better, um, just because it, like it counters like the a more variety of decks in this format. And we've seen a lot of decks in the AT, um, in the Archon team, like just run Lothab over um, the Sylvanas, especially like in decks like the mid range, um, mid range Druid, even. Actually, shows the hero power there. I think Hype's just going to cycle. Strife Crow probably just needs to put pressure on Hype because, like, that's the problem with Paladin. It doesn't put enough pressure on people. It's kind of like a little reactive, kind of like Priest. So, like, it just gives Patron Warriors so much time to draw and. Hype's like he's a twenty-two. There's four power on board. He's just gonna drop some units that you know are gonna are yeah. gonna need to be dealt with. And yeah. Ooh, that's also, a good draw. I think uh, I think the reason to not Sylvanas so was he's probably just fearing an execute play. But I feel like if you're gonna get executed, um, the warrior's likely to have to use a combo piece again to trigger the execute. Yeah. Which I feel is fine. Yeah. The other problem, like like you mentioned. Uh, the Paladin has a tough time pressuring the Warrior, and the best way for them to do it is actually just like Knife Juggler into Muster. But the Warrior has like just so many solutions um, to deal with that, like we saw in the beginning of this game. And now, this is like exactly what the Warrior wants right now. He's sitting at a very comfortable 19 HP, and the game is like playing out exactly what he wants. Alright, well, um... I mean, it looks nice to True Silver, but you don't want to leave those minions on the board. I know. It's so... Uh... Yeah, And even if you True Silver, you don't really have anything to spend the last four of your mana with. Well, you could suicide your creatures, Consecrate, and True Silver face. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, that's aggressive. The thing is, like, the Paladin has how many cards? He has, like, eight, and he only has, like, two good ones, I guess, to say, because, like, the rest are kind of, like, reactive. Yeah. Yeah, True Silver and Sylvanas are the only ones you really want to be playing. Let me think. This just feels like it's it's going to set up himself for a disaster, but <laughs> he he does have Consecrate and he does have uh, True Silver. To, like if, if there's like one Grim Patron left at 3 health, you can True Silver that and Consecrate the others. 
So it, I don't know. It feels like you can actually afford to take a wave of Grim Patrons with this hand. I like this. It might be lethal though. You only, have one whirlwind. you only have one whirlwind effect though, so it might not be. Yeah, but you have a you have a lot of targets for it. Yeah, you have a lot of patrons though. I think he thinks it's lethal. I I'm really bad at doing math on this. Like I don't even try. <laughs> I usually just wait until I have like ten damage over lethal, and I'm just like, all right, this should be enough. Well, the thing is, you have to go. That's yeah, yeah. If you, if you make it, you have to do it in the very beginning. For sure. Yeah, I, I like this from um, hyped. We've seen a lot of players, especially in the Archon team, like they've just been kind of like stalling on this, but hype just goes for it right away. Even if it's not lethal, I think he's in a decent position, I guess. I think it's probably going to be lethal, though. This is just so much. Yeah. Like, if it's not lethal, then um, you have to put your opponent on a quality Consecrate here. Do you, though? Because you have a Consecrate. Oh, that is lethal. Oh, wow. That's lethal. Dang. All right, so now, now we can basically get the judge. Planned or not planned? <laughs> Dog, what's, what's your uh, position here? I think... Ice is a very smart dude, so I would say it was plans. All right, Monk. Well, I have to go with the opposite then. I, I think like most of the time, like you kind of know it's like around lethal. So I think hype, like he made a judgment call. Like it wasn't one hundred percent guessing. It was like I have like an eighty or ninety percent of getting lethal there. I'm actually Something with like you that. on that. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's also. It's like this is probably lethal. Yeah. Uh, it's like too much to figure out. But if I wait to try to figure it out, I'm gonna be. <laughs> Like one charging Grim Patron short that I actually have of lethal at the end of the turn because of rope. Uh, so yeah, uh, goes for it, ends up having it. Uh, pretty good game. Uh, Grim Patron takes uh, first blood for uh, for Tempo Storm, but what what does that really really matter? Um, I mean, if you just consider <laughs> the last match, it matters a lot because Grim Patron yeah. was the deck that ended up going zero and five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, may maybe we are uh, overplaying the strength of Grim Patron in this format, but certainly the players in the tournament probably disagree. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think Patron's really, really strong. Zixo, whenever I was talking to Zixo about the matches, he was just like, yeah, I mean, I got a loss, but it was to Patron, so I just took that out of the pool for my team. <laughs> That's basically what he said. He was like, it didn't count because it was Patron. So yeah. I think players just think it's like a deck that's probably going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the lineup differences, um, we do see most players bring in the same classes except Gara. He's bringing um, Shaman instead of Priest. It looks like they're sticking his um, his lineup with the unusual ones. It's like, uh, yeah, we, we have these five classes, and Gara, you got to find a sixth to play. Yeah, it's it's pretty much exactly the same five classes that everyone is deciding to play, and then that sixth class is like Shaman, Priest, Druid, or Paladin. I like and how like Drew just fell out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's like because everyone was so scared based on what happened last week with Savitz doing so poorly, um, Oskaka doing poorly in the first week, um, and even I think Eloise uh, did poorly with Drew in the first week as well. Mm -hmm. And from uh, Cloud Nine's side, um, actually, I think they're running exactly the same six classes, but no player is running the same two classes they were running last week. Um, they're all running the same classes as they were in week one, though. So it's like, okay. It's it's pretty much the same. Um, if Ikka plays mid range hunter and zoo, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. um, Strife Crow, he's known as a tempo mage player though, and he brought freeze mage in week one. So yeah. it might be the case that Strife Crow decided to change up his mage. Who knows? Well, we were talking about that. How uh, freeze mage is just really good because. Uh, while it does fail against some dominant decks in the meta in regular tournaments, in a tournament where you have to bring six decks, it's just going to have some favorable <laughs> exactly. matchups. <laughs> I definitely yeah, like, agree with that. Um, like if it's Freeze Mage, it's going to be favored against like Rogue, probably the Shaman. Um, depends what type. Of, uh, it might be favored against the Hunter, depending on what version it is. Um, Eloise is probably bringing Handlock, so might be okay there. And then the the Freeze Mage Mirror is like a fifty fifty anyway. Well, I have to say. Personally, I mean, I don't pay attention to like all the tournaments, but I do cast quite a lot of them. Uh, I have not seen anything that's not Mech Shaman win a game in a tournament in probably <laughs> about half a year. So I'd be surprised if there's anything but that happening from Gara. 
I mean, Gara is known as like a mid range shaman player. At least he was known. Right. And, that's why I mentioned it. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it's possible, but I still have like serious doubts that uh, his team was on board with that decision. Yeah. Does um, Elois play uh, Freeze Mage or Tempo? Freeze Mage and Handlock. Okay. Yeah. So Freeze Mage yeah. against Hunter. Just, so. um, just like going off of what you said, Crip, by the way, um, like people like really rag on mid range shaman and about like how no one uses it and it's such a terrible class, but like. It's actually like statistically like the worst archetype, or at least the second worst archetype, with it having a forty-two percent win rate um, in Black Rock Mountain. The only one worse is Ramp Druid, like the no combo Druid. Okay. Wow, that's like Druid without Druid. Yeah. <laughs> Why bother? All right. Um, so uh, this is a fun match. It's uh, it's like a race against time for the hunter. <laughs> And uh, some very, very tough plays from the Freeze Mage in most of the matchups against it. Yeah, I feel like it comes down to whether you draw like Mad Scientist early, Boot Hoarder, or like a Frostbolt just to deal with the juggler. Mm. At least from the Freeze Mage's perspective. I, would, I, I think it's more of what the Freeze Mage draws than the Hunter. Yeah, you can expect the Hunter to like uh, curve out pretty well in this case. Mm. Um, but the one thing that Ekop maybe have going for him is that we did see Dr. Boom in his opening hand. So at least like he has that like one big bomb to play on turn seven if he eventually draws into that. And Doctor Boom is like one of the best things you can uh, draw against the um, against Freeze Mage. Yeah, I'm sure he's running um, Lothab as well. I haven't seen a mid range hunter without Lothab ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. All right. Well, uh, he gets the Mad Science on turn two. He's gonna have a good turn three. Um, you can't hope for too much better from this type of hunter deck. Yeah, I actually really like the decision to play the Mad Scientist because, like, if you played the Knife Juggler, it would have just gotten Frostbolted. But this is, like, mm -hmm. I don't really want to Frostbolt to a Mad Scientist, so I'm probably going to, like, coin Arcan Intellect and Ecop gets, like, a free two damage and then can just, like, start chaining off his units. So. Some yeah, people yeah. would have played the Knife Juggler there. I don't know. Makes a lot of sense. Especially because yeah. uh, if you force the coin Arcane Intellect, you would um, basically, like, Force the emperor to have like to come out on turn six instead of a potential turn five. Exactly. Yeah, uh -oh. the emperor is such a strong card, and I think in this in this oh, free oh, oh. upper oh brutal. You can't even kill that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's gonna connect for like eight more damage. I think. <laughs> the thing is, At like, least. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess you play like Acolyte and hope it trades in, or not hope you can trade in. But is that like a freezing trap? You're yeah, never gonna you, get you, that. You can't, oh you man! Can't, I think I think you have to arc and intellect and hope for the best. Yeah. Maybe you just ping it like a couple times. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but uh, okay. Eloise has two ice blocks in her hand. I mean, th those are pretty much like the worst cards you want. You need to get them off the Mad Scientist, or like you won't be able to play them ever. Okay, so we have uh, a verification that is Freeze Trap because it's uh, not playable from Ecop's hand. Oh, yeah. God, so much power on board. Yeah, Turn this, this, might, be a, <laughs> this might be a complete... Oh, uh, that's a good draw. It's here. All right, so oh, I guess you can... Yeah, you can just, like, Frostbolt, play a Doomsayer, and then he has to waste, like, seven damage on it if he doesn't have the silence. Then Coin Emperor, and then, like, you're, you're like, feeling okay, even though if it's, like, terrible Emperor hand. Oh, my goodness, you have, like, nothing. <laughs> yeah. This is the absolute uh, worst Emperor hand that you could even think of. Like, uh, Pyroblast, it's not really useful here. Ice Block, not useful. And, like, the two draw cards, okay, I guess. But you really yeah, but want, like, the active things. The thing is, like, the Hunter doesn't know that, right? He's still going to waste everything he can into the Emperor. I actually wouldn't mind Ecop going face here. You, you're only saving a piloted Sky Golem, unless you play the Knife Juggler here. Like, it doesn't make sense to kill this, in my opinion. Because, like, you're not really developing your board, and the other way you could have pushed seven more damage and still had, like, a slightly weaker board. So, since he did this, I think he has to play the juggler. Hmm. Shoot to shoot? You can only shoot face. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, one thing that Eloise does have going for her is that. Ekop's, wow. uh, his hand is like not that great right now. Like he isn't getting his five drops, his six drops, or seven drops. He doesn't have like anything to close out the game. And Freeze Mage is really good at dealing with just uh, like non non recurring damage. Um, basically, like the um, just like the bows and 
um, basically lepronomes and uh, quick shots, for example. But it's really bad at like clearing the board off and um, like starving off damage that comes every single turn. Mm -hmm. uh, quick shot is uh, more that reach damage that's uh, quite nice for the hunter. Um, yeah. What do you do here, though? Do you go for that like juggle off the death rattle from the shredder, perhaps? It's so like these turns are always really hard because you can go for the fifty fifty, but if you don't go for the if you don't get the fifty fifty, it's like really bad. I think you might just go with like quick shot into trade his face into it and then um, shoot and then go face. Mm -hmm. I think going for the juggle is too risky, and you lose board to like uh, to like a uh, blizzard. We also have to keep in mind sure. that. Um, it's very unlikely he'll actually get to uh, draw from quick shot this game because his freeze trap is probably not going to get proc. Yeah, that's a good point. From uh, from our perspective, though, that like actually leaving this emperor up isn't like the worst case scenario because all the cards in Eloise's hand are like so terrible. Exactly, but I mean, if you're ecop, you're just like, well, what if she has like an Alexstrasza? I don't want to turn seven Alexstrasza and like. Uh, you know, free ice blocks or something like that. So yeah. uh, it's really safe to kill it unless you can like put up lethal pretty much or set up lethal. Well, Again, Lewis has another tough turn ahead of her. Yeah, but you just... probably want to block. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's going to use the ice uh, lance defensively, almost for certain. Yeah, typically in this matchup, you do use it defensively. It's very hard to, like, stable. Like, you you have so many dead cards in your hand that you don't want to turn your Ice Lance into a dead card as well. I guess Arcane Intellect draws you the most cards immediately. Like, you, if you act like Pink, you're only drawing one. Hello? Speak to me. Okay, goes for that. Is the act like Pink? I think she wants to juggle. All right. Well, the thing is, because you ice block, if you arcane intellect, that's two draws. If you acolyte, it's still two draws. But it's really over the course any... of time. It's not because you you still can't play anything else that you would draw because you only have one mana left. If you arcane intellect, you don't have to ice block though. You could draw a barrier and then ice lance because you don't want your uh, block to be popped. Um, how close is this? That's six eight. Well, yeah, you could go for the yeah. You could go. I like. Why did he attack in immediately? He just he thought it was lethal. I think. Um, maybe if you count the damage, maybe like getting a Leoc would have changed the math a bit. You can go for the unleash. Oh no, you can't because you can't shoot if you do that, huh? I think I don't know. Would you shoot here? Would you just put him to two and not pop the block, or would you go for the the lethal? Hmm. With uh, it's only Huffer now. Oh, now. I think getting him to two is is really important. Like the pressure is on. Yeah, I would say so as well. Yeah, the problem is if you don't get Huffer though, you can get quite punished by like a flame strike perhaps. Uh, Shoot. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's scientist. You're just so far away from doing anything here. Yeah, it's again like none of the uh, very active cards. Like these would have been great. Uh, the mad scientist at least would have been great early on. But pretty much everything in this hand is like not something that really affects the board. Yeah, um, you can't even like run in your uh, acolyte because there's a freezing trap up. You need like a frost nova, and then next turn you need your block popped, and then you need to play like heal bot into frost nova or something. Yeah, just no Frost Nova, no Blizzard even. Um, not even a Flame Strike. And at this point, like, Ice Barrier wouldn't even be that great because you'd have to both play Ice Barrier and Anti Keel Bot on the same turn, pretty much, to get it, um, like, to get something to work out. It's really, really bad for Eloise right now, and just no real options, but oh. Oh, there is Ice Nova. I don't. What does the heal accomplish? I, yeah, I don't. I don't like the heal bot here. Uh, well, well, you, have ice ice you have to ice. You have to Or not. Does lethal on board, but the freezing trap might proc. 
but that's still a seven mana um, anti heal bot that you can't really play. Yeah, I don't think you really have to consider like the anti heal bot being popped right now. But is there a way for Ekop to both pop the block and kill off the heal bot? I think so. Uh, you just unleash and play Animal Companion, but I think it has to be something other than Misha. Yeah, just something add a bit of damage on the board. Yeah, that or good juggles. Actually, juggles should be irrelevant. Yeah, that does do it. And you can even save the bow charge. Now. Yeah, it seems pretty good. And now we're seeing like why that like maybe would have been like it almost certainly would have been better to just get the uh, frost nova off, right? Last turn. You don't need the frost nova last turn because um, he's going to pop you anyways with like a shoot or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you just want to develop a mad scientist or draw more cards, and then next turn you play the heal bot into nova, so he can't pop you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, none of this is really going to work anymore. Uh, she basically needs to Ice Block and draw Elastraza next turn, right? Mm hmm Set up a Doomsayer, maybe, something like that. Oh, if those scientists came earlier, the game would have been over. Like, Mad Scientist is so, so good in Mage, or well, in uh, Freeze Mage. She still has uh, at least two draws from the board, plus her from the turn, if she does uh, Ice Block, Loot Hoarder, Thalnos, to try to get Alistraza in order to survive. Yeah, the problem with Alistraza is even if you do draw it, then the Ekob will be develop able to develop a board that just kills it, or just kills uh, you without an Ice Block on the field. Mm -hmm. But that's really the, your only chance here. Yeah. Yeah. So from... So from what we know, Ekop is essentially won the game already. If he plays Hyman this turn. Yeah. Actually, um, how much damage is there? He can, uh, she can stay alive if she draws Alex Straza and then Ice Lance is the Hyman, I think. What? Oh yeah, that's right. Because um, it's zero. I actually really like Ecop attacking in here because if he just shot uh, shot her, uh, actually no wait it doesn't matter because it's uh it would be ice block and she'd be dead. <laughs> Never mind. But anyways, exactly. I was gonna say yeah I was gonna say if she had both secrets up, you want to pop the the, um, the barrier that way if she Alex's back up, she doesn't have barrier and the 15 HP. It's really important to pop both, but in this case it didn't matter. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know juggles will go to an immune target. Now. I haven't seen that before. Do you guys? Uh, yeah, I think it happens a lot more in constructed than in arena, right? Yeah, it's it's happened. I just haven't seen a tournament yet. But all right, now I know at least. Those are Juggle good. Will still try at an immune target. <laughs> so you you have to go for more draws here, right? Um, uh, you're dead unless you run can the second heal bot. And yeah. you can't even play the second heal bot. Well, this is uh, this double is like the story. Ice barrier. Wow. Exactly, just trying to double ice barrier. Like, um, Eloise hasn't drawn into any of her blizzards, and she drew the frost nova too late. And it, but I think like the biggest part of it was that, she, uh, like Dog, like you said, she didn't get the mad scientist off first, which um, not only would have gotten secrets into play, but it would have thinned out her deck, and so that she wouldn't draw all the secrets. Yeah, she drew every secret, and she couldn't play the mad scientist because like the freezing trap was up. Yeah, you really can't do much. I'm curious why she decided to attack. I guess just to see what the trap is, maybe for the future. Yeah. Just just to know for sure, I guess. Well, well uh, now Ekop's deck is actually, like, because she conceded, now Ekop's deck, right. deck is locked. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. All right. Well, uh, Cloud9 evens it up through Ekop. One and one on the board. Uh, the Hunter getting a win and the Groom Patron getting a win. Uh, not too big of a surprise. It seems like most of these teams are kind of leading with the strong decks. That seems to be a running theme. Um, so obviously, you know, some of the strong decks are going to win against the others. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Eloise took a loss there. And I kind of want to talk about, like, the dynamic of Team Tempo Storm. Because, like, most teams, like, they're all EU, like Liquid and not Nihilum. Or they're, like, mostly all NA, like uh, your team, dog, Team Value yeah. Town. But, like... 
Uh, some teams are NA, NEU, like Team Archon, but Tempo Storm was like the only team that was pretty much all three regions. And I've actually mm -hmm. talked to Gar about this, like how it was so difficult for them to practice just because like they had to set a very specific time each night so that all three players could wake up at that time. But now that Eloise, she's actually going to be in uh, California for at least one month. I think it just might improve like the team atmosphere and also just improve the practice situation. So that might be something that um, helps Tempo Storm going forward, even though they're starting off with an 0-2 record. What kind of uh, practice do you organize as a team for this type of event? I mean, you, you probably have something to do with that, I'd imagine, Monk. Um, yeah, basically, like, um, um, we, like, consider the lineups together, and there's, like, a lot of ways that I don't want to reveal too much, but, like, um, there's ways that we, like, figure out the lineup together, and also we, um, we try to test the lineups against, like, other teams that are not in the Archon League, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know, I know Tempo Storm, like, they're, like, really into, um, they're, like, actually one of the teams that are, is trying the hardest in Archon League in terms of practice. And in terms of like uh, building their lineups, whereas on the op uh, exact opposite end of the spectrum, I think Cloud Nine is probably working. Um, uh, out of all the teams, they're probably like working the least closely. Mm -hmm. um, well, Cloud Nine, I believe, on the scoreboard is slightly ahead uh, right now, at least. Uh, Temple Storm is zero and two. Cloud Nine is one and one. So if Temple Storm wins this, um, I think they might actually be like dead even if they win by one game which seems to be the the running trend in uh the archon team league so far hmm. but that has to happen if it doesn't it's quite the opposite uh it really really sucks to be zero three and that is uh one of the outcomes that could happen for tempo storm at the end of today yeah you have to feel like at least like one team would go zero three at the end of the day and unfortunately like i think most teams or most um like fans coming into this might argue that Tempo Storm might be the weakest link uh, or the weakest team going into it because they just they typically don't have uh, players that have too many great accomplishments lately, and also again like they're from d three different regions. They're kind of like a I would want to say like a newer team in the sense that Eloise just joined, so they might not have as much synergy. I mean, Dog, you've hung out with uh, you're actually part of Team Tempo Storm for a while, kind of in China. Um, how did like that work out, and how how was like the practice situation? Um, well, we practiced a ton and we set up a bunch of like, uh, we just like test a lot and then discuss what we should bring because we had to bring every single class to the format because uh, it was just like best of uh, best of threes, but everyone had to bring our best of fives, but everyone had to bring three classes. It was just, I don't, I don't really know. It was just like hanging out with your friends and playing Hearthstone. It seemed like uh, practicing is kind of difficult in this game, I would say. Like, you just try to test matchups, and that's the best you can do. But most of the time, you already know the matchups, so I'm not sure if practicing helps too much, per se. Um, because you, you already get, like, information from, uh, like, previous decks, and you also get information of, like, what the best it, deck is, because, like, Reddit, it's like, oh, I hit, like, rank one legend with this deck, and you're like, oh, like, that's a really good deck. Let me try that out. <laughs> like, you don't have to do the yeah. work anymore. Like, you just, like, take that deck, you test the matchups, you can tweak it a little bit. Um, tweaking is probably the most important thing in this, the pro scene, so that's mostly what you do when you test, or at least that's what I do when I test. I, like, tweak decks to make them a little bit better and give me, like, more percentages to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, that's certainly proved to be uh, a pretty good uh, strategy, as uh, your recent tournament success has been uh, quite impressive, dog. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, just play a lot of ladder with other people's decks. There you go, guys. <laughs> yeah, you does. too can be a Hearthstone pro. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of hoping to see uh, Gara come out here. I think uh, Gara came out uh, pretty early on uh, in the mat in the matches uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, in this league, and I'm really, uh, I'm really eager to see if he does push for an interesting shaman deck. I think it's a bad idea, but I want to see him do it. I think he's going to go mid range. He really, really likes really, mid range. Yeah, okay. I, I agree. Um, not only nice. that, but like he has um, Gooby Sinchu um, as like one of his friends that like gives him all these shaman decks, and like he's supposedly known as like one of the best shaman players in the world. So I think, uh, I think we might be seeing mid range shaman for like the first time in a quite a long time. But um, just like in this series overall, like I really want to root for Tempo Storm because, um, like we said, like I think everyone would argue that like based on skill alone, Cloud Nine definitely has the advantage. But again, Tempo Storm is the team that's preparing the most together, 
And Cloud9 is one of the teams that's preparing the least together. So I really want to see like how preparation can overcome just like overall perceived skill. Well, perhaps we get to see a little bit of that. Um, <laughs> let me see Eloise coming out again. Wow. I the the interesting thing is um, this is in this cool. format, you generally don't want to be sending out the same person twice, right. uh, unless you want to throw them a curveball, because if you lose, then two of your classes are locked, and then they like, you know, can have a good matchup. Like they they have a better. They, they just statistically percentage. have better matchups, exactly. right? Yeah. 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 So um, it is a bit of a risk especially this early on, but it's one risk that we've seen uh, Tempo Storm make as a team uh, repeatedly now. I think they are I think they are the most consistent <laughs> team to like lock out their players early on. I know it happened both weeks, didn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, well... Uh, it's a good matchup, though. I, I think so, as long as Strife Crow doesn't draw... Like, the main... The main card to draw in this matchup for Strife Crow is um, Antonidas. If he doesn't get Antonidas, then it's going to be very hard for him because mm -hmm. like Doomsayers usually go off for Mirror Entity, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On on the other hand, though, I believe there's like this new Tempo Mage coming out. Oh well, forget that. Oh, okay. Whoa. 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. So this is the uh, infamous Strife Crow quote unquote grinder mage that just like attempts to get as much value out of, out of everything as possible. And I think it can do quite well because um, this deck has heal bots, and if it can duplicate or uh, echo Medivh heal bots, I think that's like pretty much a win right there, right? Okay. Well, uh, that mirror entity is going to be terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting that El or Eloise didn't keep a Doomsayer, but I guess she was expecting Freeze Mage, maybe. Yeah, I right. definitely agree. Like that's like well, an instant keep in like I guess the the tempo mage matchup, but it's a little mm -hmm. different here. Isn't it also like a like a statistics game? Like if it is a freeze mage, uh, and it probably is, um, you know, you have to go against that. But if it's the other mages, you're you're favored anyway. That's true, but I think the reason you're favored is because of the doomsayer, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, I think that because like if you wipe their entire board, like that's a pretty big turning point. Yeah, and it's it's so devastating when you play it into a mirror entity, which yeah, which exactly. is still which is still possible, by the way, in this mm -hmm. game because Strifker has revealed the one already. Mm -hmm. You could go with a mad scientist here. Um, if you're giving him another secret, it's either going to be counterspell, probably. I assume he might be running duplicate, but it's probably going to be like counterspell or a second mirror entity. If it's a second mirror entity, you don't really care because you can just like play Doomsayer later. Yeah. So she didn't attack. She still thinks it's Freeze Mage, and she doesn't want to proc the. Um, what, she the just proc the secret. She just proc the secret. I... She's playing yeah. around Battle Rage. She's confused oh, okay. with the classes. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, probably just ended turn too quickly or something. It's not a big deal. Perhaps. That should be Alex, anyways. All right. Uh, well, I wonder what secret came from Strife Crow. Uh, I guess you're probably a bit more familiar with this deck, Monk. So you're saying you're saying Counterspell is in there? Uh, uh, I don't. I have, I have no idea to be honest. Um, okay. Ooh, it's well, not mirror entity. It's not mirror entity. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him just uh, run like so many different types of these decks that it, like he basically changes the list every single time. And I mm. would have to think like even though he streams this type of deck, he probably changed like quite a few cards from like his last stream. I would say it's uh, either duplicate. I mean, well, we know it's not mirror entity, so it's probably like duplicate or um, duplicate or counterspell. I can't imagine him playing like ice block in this deck. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't fit the theme of it. Maybe ice barrier, but no. Eh. Wow. Okay. Well, it's not duplicate, and it's obviously not mirror. Oh, I think it's not counterspell. Yep. Yep. Oh, there you go. That makes so maybe the Drake a very good play. Yeah, I think this might just be a tempo mage with one echo of Indeed slash splashed in. That kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, I would, I would say so. And if it's that, then I think the um, the Freeze Mage is definitely favored here because it like this kind of deck typically doesn't run heal bots, so Strife Crow can actually Echo of Medivh those. Ugh, it's like, do you want to give him a Loot Hoarder? Because you think that's Mirror Entity. So do you want to give him a Loot Hoarder? Do you want to... I mean, you're not going to test for Counterspell here because it's terrible. You, you usually only want to test for Counterspell whenever you have a play that kind of correlates with it. 
So like, what's she gonna do? Coin, and then if it's not counter spell, it's just like, wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, so you definitely don't test for it. You probably just play the loot hoarder, I assume, or pass. I think those are like very reasonable plays. It's so funny how like um, the fact that Strife Crow's deck is like somewhat unknown makes it such a problem, <laughs> such a problem for her. Mm -hmm. And it's well, like a situation that you so rarely encounter in tournaments these days. I think uh, from Eloise's perspective. This deck is like very well known because she hasn't seen any weird cards so far. I mean, the only weird card in Strifeco's deck or Strifeco's hand right now is the uh, the Echo of Mediv. Like yeah. from Eloise's perspective, this is like 100 percent just a standard tempo mage. Hmm. Well, she knows it's not Mirror and or uh, Mirror and Adina, which is nice. And like Boom is a pretty big pickup from Strifeco as well. The Echo, I wonder how much that's going to pay off. I feel like it's not too bad against Freeze Mage, just because usually they freeze your board, but they leave it up. So oh. you can, like, Echo has a pretty big whiff. Yeah. That was uh, one out of four you did not want to lose. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you guys kept mentioning how Freeze Mage has such a, has such a big advantage here. Um, it feels like it's not really winning yet. Yeah, it's just sometimes you can force off like a, a mirror, um, a mirror entity from the mad scientist, and then you can like run a doomsayer into it, and yeah, then you so kind big. of just instantly win right there. And also, it happens, like flame strikes clear the yeah, entire board. Strikes. Yeah, it it happens like a bit more on ladder because you're like not really sure of what your opponent is running, but um, I think in, it's like less likely here, I guess. Do you think there's some chance Eloise maybe cut Flame Strike? We haven't seen a single copy, and she was down to like seven cards in the last game. Um, I actually think that's pretty reasonable to cut a Flame Strike. Nova. All right. So I hope she thinks it's Counterspell because she can use the coin here, and then probably just Frost Nova Doomsayer. Although it gets cleared really easily, maybe just coin into Blizzard is better. And the next turn you can ping. Nice. Okay. Oh, she's digging the uh, the Frost Nova Doomsayer play to deny any tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing to note is um, there's this recent tempo mage list that's come out called like the like a player called Null got rank one legend with it, and instead of Archmage Antonidas, it runs Ragnaros. So um, mm. it's kind of crazy because it, it runs like two arcane missiles too. But it also runs Ragnaros, so that could be like maybe slightly more favored in this matchup. Yeah, Rag is definitely a force to be reckoned with and, uh, against Freeze Mage. We've seen some really weird stuff from Tempo Mages. We've even seen Kilties and some. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I think when uh, when Blackrock Mountain had like just finished coming out uh, for like a few weeks, the dominant deck on ladder was Tempo Mage. And I think uh, one of the variants that was fairly popular was Kill to Z. So Striker is opting to play the uh, mirror entity here because he just saw the Doomsayer. And he's like, oh, what are the odds she has a second one? She probably would have played it earlier to my first one. So it's pretty good. I mean, he's taking a slight risk, but ultimately his board's just going to die to a flame strike eventually anyways. Yeah. Well, it's not yet. Uh, right now, the uh, Freeze Mage is still losing. <laughs> She can spend her whole turn using a blizzard, but if uh, if she does, then she's facing Dr. Boom. Yeah, Dr. Boom is a pretty big problem. The thing is, do you really put him on having Echo of Medivh? Because no. if I was in like in her shoes, I would probably be like, alright, I can like anti keelbot ping this turn, ping the Drake, and then you know he gets the anti keelbot, who cares? And the next turn I can blizzard and ping the um the heelbot, right? To set up I for a good blizzard and freeze the board. So that's probably like what I would try to do. Yeah. Cause like you're not gonna get PL bot value later, I don't think. Yeah. I think it's actually even more key that Eloise wins this game. Or rather that Strife Pro wins this game, because now that um Echo Medivh is like revealed, that's kind of like one of those cards that like its value gets a lot worse when it's not a surprise anymore. Right? Yeah, that's true. Losing a game is a lot more Detrimental just because, like, you get to see the cards. Now, what's the merit to playing Arcane Missiles here? Four damage to face? Do you need any more merit than that? <laughs> well, it was Ooh, even baby. better last time, because uh, last <laughs> turn it was like six damage to face. Yeah. 
but hunters oh. uh, hunters want that card. <laughs> I think the the real winner here is that Echo. If if Strife Crow can play Did like Did he attack with the Drake there? It was frozen. Oh, okay, my bad. Sorry. I'm going crazy. Um <laughs> If if Stryker can get uh, an echo on Doctor Boom, and I imagine he will, like the only way Doctor Boom is dying is Frostbolt Ice Lance. I mean, is that a reality with Antonitis in hand? Yeah. And also, uh, even if you know your opponent runs Echo of Mediv, like I don't think you can even do that play. I think you have to Frostbolt Ice Lance it. You might be able to take eight this turn and just go with Barrier Ping. Mm -hmm. um, I would still maybe Frostbolt Ice Lance it there. I mean, it, do you you just expect Echo? Is that why? No. Well, the mage, like the the other mage, is almost out of threats. I mean, I guess you don't know that, but you're gonna lose if he draws Archmage anyways. So you just want to deal with his board and try to outlast him, because he like you know he's like double arcane like and stuff like that. So I think it's fine, especially like you're gonna draw into another spell, so Archmage is gonna get value eventually, and uh, I think it's fine. Well, this is gonna be uh, really sad. I'm like, I'm, might be being a little sadistic here, but I just want to see Eloise's reaction when, oh, when Echo Medivh comes down. Damn. Oh, okay. Well, maybe the place changed. Down. Yeah. Um, well, no, St Strife Crow can, can lethal. Yeah, it's lethal. Put her to one. Oh, or less. Or one. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> <laughs> So how much damage is that over actually? That's it's not that much over, right? No, I guess though if you wanted to echo, you'd probably echo first here. So I guess he's he's just going for it. Wait, is it lethal? Oh, it's not. That boombot needed a hit for more than one. Oh wow. Oh, I didn't even realize that. So may yeah. Do you even want to copy your scientist here? Wouldn't you rather just echo and play the second Thalmus? Oh, I guess you can do that anyways. Yeah. Or the Boomba, perhaps. Yeah, and then next one you can Thalmus, Fireball, Fireball. Okay. Dogs can't count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Well, you we have some ice lances. You have to go for a power play this turn. He's just going to play another boom or lethal you, I think. Interesting. I guess there's no way of telling he has double fireball in hand either. So maybe the play is just Archmage, Frostball, Ice Lance here. Yeah, like it that. has to be double ice lance. Uh, you only you're only on nine mana right now. Oh, okay. My bad. Um, so double ice lance is a bit weak because you kind of want an ice lance next turn for Doctor Boom as well. You can just use one. It's not like terrible. Next turn you can use the second one. Uh -huh. Going through the okay. Okay. Well, what it's do you effective think? on the mad scientist if he, if he does draw out another secret? Yeah. What do you think about that ice lance to the mad scientist? Because it feels like maybe it would have been slightly more effective on the boom bot, perhaps. Because the mad scientist, like you've seen three secrets already, and typically like these kind of mages, they only run three. That's true. I don't know, if I saw Echo, I'd be like, um, <laughs> maybe there's more secrets in there somewhere. Well, now we've all found out that the uh, Antonitis is not as good as two boom bots. Oh, no, actually, uh, this is slightly awkward. I think he should have sacrificed yeah, his, exactly. uh, Thalnos to get it lower, and then play the second Thalnos to kill it. I to, like Because you, you want to put it at, uh, you want to yeah. put her at one, but now yeah. like he's gonna have to put her at seven. <laughs> I don't see a way to put her at like one anymore, exactly. Yeah, Strefko realizes it. <laughs> oh, I messed up. You can't even lethal her. Because he played the nano worm here. Oh, he's just getting her though. Okay. Yeah. I've okay. talked to Strefko recently about like just like playing in tournaments and he's told me that like oh! since he went Oh my god. Whoa! You just you go for it because you win, yeah, right? It's, it's just game. Oh my goodness! That was so important for him to pop the block that turn. Oh my God! Strife was misplayed. Like mega punished. 
Jeez. Exactly. Now Strifegro needs to draw like an ice block here. Well, if he has one in his deck, he's going to get it. But <laughs> yeah. I have my doubts that it's in there. Oh, man. You get two draws, but what are you going to get? Like, Strifegro knows Eloise already has two fireballs anyway. You think yeah. there might be a Kazan Mystic in there? <laughs> I doubt it. But yeah, like, what I was talking about is that, like, Strifegro, he's been playing so many tournaments lately that... He's actually like he's told me that he has tournament fatigue right now. It's just too mu too much for him, mm -hmm. and it's just what we see right now, basically. Like I don't think this is a mistake that Strifer would make normally. Rocket one, but what does that actually do? Well, what can you even draw like? That's not it. Like, again, this deck probably doesn't run heal bots because it's such an aggressive deck. So, after all of that, Eloise just takes the win. Uh, Strifegro, yeah, that he definitely has to be like shaking his head right now. And, like, this is like you have to go back to your team and be like, hey, I lost. And not only that, but like, I almost like could have won 100%. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, that Alistraza topic is so sick. Like there was, there was no other card she could have possibly drawn or done anything with, really. Oh no, the the other ice block maybe, right? Yeah, ice block yeah. into emperor or something, mm -hmm. something like that. But that wouldn't have made her win the game. And then the thing is, like, if you just ice block, Striker will still pop the second. Uh, will yeah, he'll still pop the second to, ice to block. To be fair, she could have just had it in her hand. Like, the top yeah. deck didn't really I, like. I mean, it did matter, but ice you know. block. No, you're right. No, it had to be Alistraza there. It had to be only Alistraza. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> well, Tempo's Strife from up, 2 1. Yeah, Strifegro gets really, really, really punished. I mean, that, yeah. that, that feels bad, man. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's about as feels bad, man, as it gets. Um, yeah. yeah, pretty big bummer. Well, the thing is, like, Tempo Strum often goes up in the lead in the, uh, early on um, against. Uh, like, last week, I think against Archon, they were uh, up pretty much, and Gara was, like, the only one to finish it off. And his like last deck was, uh, it was he had face hunter and priest. Neither of them could like pick up a match. So like Gara, he's again he's bringing like the sixth deck, which is everyone considers the weakest <laughs> deck. So we might have just be like seeing the repeat once again. Hyped with the rogue, probably gonna take a win. He's like pretty n known with rogue. Eloise with two strong decks as well, handlock and freeze mage. But Gara once again um, with that hunter that might not do as well, and that sixth deck, that awful sixth deck. I wonder who yeah. they're going to send in now. I, I would assume they send in Gara. Mm. The so Strife Crow is 0 uh, 2 right now in this one. Uh, each of his decks has uh, failed to produce a win. And that's some uh, nice info uh, Tempo Storm has. Tempo Storm still has quite a lot of flexibility. I feel like one dynamic that we really haven't talked about is um, just having every player in the game still. It kind of plays around with the bench mechanic a little bit. So, like, if Gara picks up a win, if one player gets benched when each player only has one deck, it's not as it's not as relevant. Yeah, mm. makes a lot of sense. Rogue versus Warlock. I'm assuming it's Zoo. Does Eka play anything other than Zoo? Um, he does. He plays Malagosa Lock Lock okay. a lot. Um, in the um, the Hearthstone Pro League that you're right. a part of, dog. Oh yeah, um, HPL. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh. I think I think Rogue's favored against Zoo and uh, and uh, Malilock. I think both are like very very. You think Rogue yeah. is favored against Malagos Lock? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think most people agree with that, but just like statistically, it's been uh, four two in favor of Malagos Lock. So really, I mean that's like a low sample size. But, Variance, you know. it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, but it up to that. Mid-range Zoo, or just like Zoo, against Oil Rose is, is exactly 50-50, um, statistically, uh, mm. being a 14-14 14 and 14 record. I would say, it, do you have statistics on coins? Uh, like, no, I don't have oh, that. Oh, that would be so good. You need coin statistics, because I think Rogue is super favored if they have coin. Like, yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. In this instance, uh, I believe the Rogue has the coin. Is there mm -hmm. two cards missing from, yeah. uh, from Ecop, or, exactly. or is there one? It's like it a looks split. like... It looks like the spacing that by, by the spacing it looks like there's two cards. I think, 
Oh, yeah. oh it is two. Wow, I oh, thought yeah, that was one card. card. I thought it was one card as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Hyped is... Uh, I mean, he started he's off well as a rogue equipped. player, and he's <laughs> still a rogue player, so... He knows how this works. Oh, I mean, he's... expect nothing but the best. He has, like, the next best thing after... Uh, after not after having the coin and that's good this is gonna like trade perfectly this is like the dream backstab this eye into double knife jungle? yeah I, I think he's not gonna play the backstab this turn i think he's just gonna dagger up yeah. and the next turn backstab si uh yeah. the only way you get punished by that is like an egg or a creeper but creeper you can even punch into one of the units so it's not terrible um ecop actually has void collar void collar is like the most important card in this matchup because it's really hard for rogue to deal with I mean, usually you try to kill Void Collar and sap whatever comes out, but sometimes you just can't. And I mean, if Ecop draws like a Doom Guard in the next three or four turns, or a Malganus, it's going to be kind of hard. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you think Hype is uh, thinking about here? Just whether or not he wants to backstab. If he wants to. It doesn't, it doesn't seem worth it though, because I mean, you're based against the Zoo. You're forced to play out your creatures, so he. I mean, he is playing SI seven no matter what next turn, right? Yeah. It feels yeah. like um, oh, Ekop is saying sorry, Ooh, but he's going to be job. the one saying sorry later. Uh, the thing is, like, just, if you think about the risk versus reward, um, like the the risk is like not too low. Like yeah, you basically like just take damage, four, right? yeah, three or four oh, extra damage. Yeah. Whereas like this is like almost a blowout uh, turn this early in the game. Got him. <laughs> you don't even need the backstab really here. You, you can should. just deadly poison. Doesn't deadly poison provide a higher tempo play? Uh, no. You put a unit on the board this way. If you play Deadly Poison, then um, you don't have a unit. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, next turn you can play Teacher into Prep Deadly, and then just yeah. kill off the Void Terror. If, if you got plays the Void Terror, I think that's going to be the play. Okay. Oh, he's got Powerful Bomb here. Yeah. It would be nice if he had some board left, but he doesn't. Yeah, and it looks Zoo. like a sad Void Terror play here. Yeah. You have to remember that, like, Zoo, they don't have, like, any good way of dealing with a Violet Teacher from an empty board. Like, Implosion's the best you've got, and then, like, that still doesn't do it. Oh, man. Ecop's just hoping Hype doesn't have a 4-drop here, but he has one of the best ones. Yeah. Yeah, Ecop's uh, mid-game is really going to have to carry him uh, here, yeah. but I still don't think it's enough. I feel like that tap play was mostly to maximize the chance he gets, like, one of, the, like, the really good demons. All right. Well, if this Void Caller yeah. sticks on the board, uh, Ecop has a play here with a double power of a Whelm Void Terror. I wonder if Hype's just going to go like deadly into Tink's Oil and face. <laughs> yeah. I guess you only do that play if you have the Flurry. But I like putting a lot of pressure on Zoo sometimes. Mm -hmm. You think we're going to see it? Double power of a Whelm Void Terror? I like it. Yeah. I mean, if if the rogue had sap, I think mean, sapping the, the void collar here is one of the one better game. plays. Yeah. yeah. I guess the one thing I don't like about it is that you don't get like two huge creatures on the board. So like, if he did have a sap, you would just lose the game. Whereas if you had like a Melganus plus a huge void terror, they can only sap one of them. I kind of would like to see like the prep come out. I guess like getting the Drake is more power, but. You kind of want to abuse the one ones, I feel like. And there's, okay. So he's just trying to get the one ones. I don't mind this. Okay. It was like a, an implosion hit for two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, that seems balanced. <laughs> oh yeah. Do it. Actually, is it no? Okay. Well, do you, you play you the do. Voidwalker? You play the Voidwalker, right? That way you don't get the Voidwalker out and you get the end gang boss. So PO into Voidwalker into Terror? Or is that no, not enough I think, damage? I think in the, right now you're screwed. So I think you do <laughs> double PO Void Terror and hope the top deck Doom Guard. Do you, do you go face? Yeah. Well, how the hell else do you win? Uh, exactly, yeah. That makes sense. Oh, man. <laughs> he's going for the... I think he's going to go for the trade play. Okay. I actually like your play a lot more, though. I really do. I think that's the way you win. Uh, what does Hype's hand have to be so that like he can't deal with this board? Like, if let's say if Ekop goes for face here, like 
How does hype break that much? I mean, well, he, he, he has, has a setup for lethal. Yeah. Well, Ecop has to set up for lethal this turn. Otherwise, hype's just going to go deadly, deadly uh, oil and attack base, and then the game's in a good position. Thing is, like a ten five isn't even that scary. Harrison, yeah, it's just five. A measly five. I like the I like deadly tinker, and then the last deadly. You increase your chance. You hit something that has yeah. uh, the ability to attack this turn. Can I go for? It? Is that All right. not lethal? Is it? I mean, like. Um. So it's eight no. plus eight. No, it's a so lot, but it's not lethal. So you just go face. No, I think you kill the ten five. I mean, you could go for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't see how you lose either way. Yeah, I don't exactly. think E-Cop's gonna get like that much damage. Maybe uh, like if you kill the ten five, it plays around like really fringe things like power overwhelming, soul fire, soul fire, doom guard. I don't know. Something crazy like that. Yeah, just go face. Wow. I mean, he used one PO. There's no way he gets more damage unless it's um, like Archangel. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, had he power bone last turn, he would have pushed for another eight. Uh, Doom Guard would have been one off lethal. <laughs> Mm, yeah, it, it. I mean, hype just backs out of side. On on three, two nitro Double blades, nitro. And that, yeah, and that was <laughs> that was pretty detrimental. <laughs> and then like he got had a tap on three, so. I mean, it's it's just karma, right? Because Ekop was the one that was uh, kind of emoting on turn two. He's like, ha, huh, you don't have a backstab. I, know. I would really, ah, uh, I would really like hype to see do some emotes. Yeah, exactly. Especially on turn three. <laughs> Dang. Up 3-1, that's gotta feel good. <laughs> <laughs> we did see the emote at the end from Hyped. <laughs> he knows what's up. Alright, yeah, well, uh, Hyped's done, right? Of Tempest Storm is pretty good. Is Hype done? Uh, Hype's done. He played Patron and he played Yeah, Rogue. that's right. That's right. Um, it's gonna it. be on Gara again, man. Not, like they, they just they just stick Gara like at the end with the the weird decks. Is that a good idea? You think? Um, I think just throwing in a weird, it just depends. You want to send your most favorable matchups in first, generally, um, unless you can like surprise them. There's like a little bit of mind game going on, but I feel like a lot of people just kind of like randomly throw things in with a little bit of strategy thrown in. Like, oh hey, we shouldn't send in the same person twice because we might get you know benched or something, and we don't want that. Yeah. So. Also, uh, Gar is like pretty much been known for like playing weird decks throughout his entire career. Like he's played Shaman so much. Yeah. Uh, in the first tournament that he won, uh, the first Dream Pack, he played Ramp Druid and like, like his pure Ramp, pure Ramp yeah. Druid with like Sunwalkers, Ancient Just so forth. Exactly, okay. exactly. And, and it was at a time where everyone was playing Zoo, so it worked. There <laughs> yeah, was not man. enough silences, basically. Apparently, and like even in um, the NEL league that uh, you played, dog with uh, Tempo Storm, he like pretty much was known for playing like Priest and Shaman all the time. Yeah, so much, much so that like the Chinese players were telling me that like you guys were too predictable in that sense. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really want to play those classes, so we just gave everything to him. We we're just like, yeah, Gara. I mean, your name's Gara, best Shaman. You better be playing Shaman. Mm -hmm. So. Well, he does play. Uh, he does play his decks really well, um, and it's it's pretty hard to because. Um, you get a lot of, you get like to advance in your ability to play a deck when you see how other people play it and when you know the matchups, when you understand how it should work. But when you play the strange stuff and you play it well, I feel like it's, um, you know, first you need to make a successful deck that's different, but then you also need to take a lot of time to actually figure out how it works among, among the other decks. Yeah, it just it okay. So if it's mid range shaman, I actually think all five remaining of these like all of these classes are like really good against mid range shaman, right? Like Is paladin. Tempo mage good against oh, mid range. Oh shaman? yeah, tempo mage. I forgot I, it was. I like, uh, never played tempo mage. Yeah, I forgot it was tempo mage and not freeze mage, but it's I guess still, that's like the question it's mark. Still fine, I think. I think it's fine also. It, yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. Actually. I actually, I actually think the slow paladin deck is countered by the slow shaman deck in general, because um, you just don't trade very well into the creatures that the shaman plays. Does Strifeker run musters? Oh, definitely. We didn't, yeah. we didn't see any. We didn't see probably. any, but yeah, I would assume so. I mean, muster is just like such a det detrimental card for like shaman. Yeah, I guess like, like the, the weapons really. I feel hard. that's the matchup that he needs, not not the mage. Like tempo mage can just totally wreck you because your yeah. deck's slow. If they get like a good draw at the start, there's no coming back. Yeah, the the other side is that like shaman doesn't really have a good way of dealing with muster, especially like muster or quartermaster. Like shaman doesn't have a good way of dealing. Oh, with almost. Ones. It almost happened, paladin versus shaman, but it is. The Hunter of Gara against the Palin versus Stripe Crow, which <laughs> I love the seems like Gara is going to lose here. I mean, it, it, we're, we're playing like a slow, Healy Paladin deck versus Face Hunter, probably. If it's mid range, I think Gara's favored. Actually, I think Hunter's favored in this matchup, I would say. It just depends if you like tech in Zombie Chows, if you get the Muster early or the, the Chill the Mini Bot. I think a lot of it comes down to like if you play Zombie Chow. Ooh, it's pure face. Yeah, he played this uh, last week and I believe the week before as well. So that makes a lot of sense. So stats-wise in this matchup, it's 60% for the face hunter with the record being 9 and 6. Okay. No, I thought it was actually closer to the paladin. But uh, I guess I'm more used to seeing like uh, more heals and taunts and paladin decks that probably don't exist in, uh, in yeah. Strife Curse here. Yeah, uh, one thing Strife Curse does have going for him is that uh, compared to the standard list of paladin, or the mid-range paladin, the standard list runs one Blessing of Kings, and Strife Crow, instead of the Blessing of Kings, he runs a Defender of Argus. So that should help him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. That does help. I'm sure it does. I play a lot of just uh, mid rangey type of fun Paladin decks, and um, generally what I see is if, if I get off like one taunt <laughs> and one heal, I'm just going to win. Yeah. But it looks um, like he's not doing anything with that hand. hand. very, very, very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Crip, I, I, think, I think Strife Crow runs Muster for battle. <laughs> you think so? Well, that's quite possible. All right. Uh, so we see the Haunted Creeper being coined out uh, to follow up with the Glaive Suka uh, against the Knife Juggler of Strife Crow. Strife is going to get punished pretty hard here. Yeah, I think Dara played the um, the Creeper to try to deal with the mini bot or something. But Mad Scientist kind of gets punished by it. All right. Um, the acolyte seems fine, but mm -hmm. it seems like um, generally, if you're, if you're the paladin here, you, you know you're probably going to be a little behind. But being being behind that extra little bit is like a big problem. It's a pretty intimidating board. Yeah, he might even think of going face, but I kind of yeah. like uh, trading. I mean, the thing is, you don't know the Paladin's hand, so you could think it's like really good, and hit more cards isn't going to matter. But we can see Strife Crow's hand is like pretty bad, so trading is the better play. But it's not always so obvious. Trading, you know, trading. Um, I mean, neither play is really great against Consecrate, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. I feel like this is one of those matchups where um, you, you talk a lot about like ooh, that's pretty good, but you talk a lot about like the uh, fiery war axe being like a win or lose card against Zoo, and it feels like the shielded mini bot and the muster for battle are like the exact same thing for Paladin against Face Hunter, because otherwise like Paladin has no way of contesting the board with just like simple hero powers and acolytes. Yeah, I mean that's that's what the Paladin has to have. Um, Strifer also has the zombie chows, which I think kind of buffer that a little bit. Um, I think often, especially if you go first, the zombie chow can substitute for a shielded mini bot. But getting none, it's not, it's not going to work. I really like the freezing trap here. Like, sure you're using a two drop, but that two drop is going to clear your board if you don't. Gara kind of shaking his head right now. Like, I think he's, he's scared. Going to. He's scared of like uh, consecrated. Nah, it would have happened last turn. I don't. I don't see why. 
Like, if Kotsker was happening, it would have hit him last turn, and that's the end. Well, uh, there's some merit to, like, whenever you have Consecrate in hand, you play the mini pot in the unit first. That way they play into Consecrate. That way you can, like, pop the Creeper early and stuff. You're only taking a few more damage, but I guess you're right. He probably would have Consecrated last turn regardless. Yeah, that's an interesting point, and I think you do see that in matches that are pretty close. But I think in, in this match, um, I don't know if you can really afford to take, like, an extra six, let's say. I think that might just be too much. Uh, kind of interesting that Gar is running Lotheb in this deck, and I think this is because I believe this deck is the Game King deck. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's basically Face Hunter with two piloted shredders and Lotheb, and it's like famous because Game King like finished number ranked number one legend with the deck, so it has to be like somewhat good. I also believe. Um, okay, so Gara actually recently was at a tournament with Game King on his team. It was like one of the French tournaments. But like since mm. Temple Storm doesn't have three EU players, they brought Game King along. Why does he keep like targeting that? <laughs> this is going face. It's weird. Not okay. this way, this way. Exactly. Um, like, is that face? No. What's the face? <laughs> yes. The <It's a> bot. <laughs> I bet you can make it a bot like Hunter really easily. Like Shaman seemed kind of hard to make a bot of. Why not just do face Hunter? Mm. Um. Yeah, I guess. I kind of miss playing against the Sea Giant Shaman. This is a pretty good deck. It was. It was free wins on ladder though. If you like had one BGH or two BGHs tucked in, it's just like, oh, I'm gonna go farm some bots today. <laughs> yeah. Let All right. All right. So Stra Stra picks up the True Silver, but like, no consecrate means like bad news. So I mean, that double know. quarter master is just like, ugh, not not very good. I think an Aldor is probably going to come down here. Yeah. I think he's going to try to get the heal bot back in a bit, like next turn. Mm, yeah, I guess. I don't think it's going to work though. Whoa, snakes. Well, the snake trap probably guarantees the freeze, oh, which, which is probably a pretty decent draw now, actually. That's actually, well... Hmm. You can bluff the, the trap really easily. I think like you, just you can tough. just leave the Aldor up, and then you can snake trap, and he'll think it's freezing or something. And then mm -hmm. you can play creeper and shoot. But that that forces you to pop your creeper, so it's kind of weird. It seems like a pretty good unleash turn as well. Just like yeah. getting it out there. I think Making you, can, sure. you can pretty frequently get three, though. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think he has to. Let's go for it. Hmm. Yeah, it seems fair enough. You just like clear off as much as possible. You, you pretty much know your opponent doesn't have Consecrate, so you can commit to the board as much as you want. Although, he seems to be hedging with the Vorgan Infiltrator. Yeah, nope, I, think I'll he play. I like it. Killing it off even. Oh, he doesn't have... Oh, he only runs two secrets? What? So, he, he only has Sneak one freezing and, freezing and one snake. Yeah. That's interesting. I think Strife Girl right now, he like kind of breathes yeah, a sigh of really here. confused. Like, <laughs> Does he have two secrets in hand? So maybe one? But I think this might actually be beneficial to Gara. And like, it sounds bad, but like, he's going to play the Snake Trap, and Strife Girl is like 100% going to think it's freezing. Yeah, exactly. At least I would. I would in a heartbeat, just be like, oh, it's freezing. Whatever. Yeah, n pretty much no one runs one freezing and one Snake Trap. <laughs> no, it's so confusing. Uh -huh. And that's like, like, kind of like a Gara touch. Yeah, I've seen um, I've seen one snake, one explosive when like everyone was playing face hunter. Okay, I, I've actually never seen that. I've seen like two explosive, one snake before. I saw that on ladder the other day. Some guy ran explosive and snake. Yeah, it was the strangest thing. I like attacked face and like explosive went off, and my my mini didn't come back. I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> So this is actually pretty interesting because we were talking about like how Strife Crow's opening was like so terrible, but now it doesn't seem so bad. Like there's not that much damage uh, coming from uh, Gara, and he has to get past this taunt, which he can't. Plus, mm. Strife Crow, he has a Defender of Argus in his hand as well. He might just like Arcane Gull on that, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I think the the original list, uh, the Game King list, runs double quick shot, 
And I was thinking like he might have cut like a quick shot to fit in a third trap, which is the snake trap, which wasn't in the original list. But now that we know that there's only two traps in the list, it seems like the rest of the list is exactly the same. And this this snakes is gonna get like pretty good value. It's like three damage pretty much because yeah. you know, mm. there's one no thing I haven't uh, I haven't seen is like the the quick shot dream. I haven't seen quick shot into quick shot into kill command before. Oh I really God. want to. I'd be so tilted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it actually kind of happened uh, with Life Coach, I believe, in the Star Ladder, um, not Star in Vulcan, like two days ago, where he got like quick shot into something, and then the next turn he drew quick shot as well into like Kill Command or something. So it was like a pseudo dream right there. Okay. Mm. I must move quickly. All right. Just waiting to see Nightblade and Hunter. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, this this whole match is about healing, and if Stractor doesn't have it, he's not going to win. It's true. Yeah. I mean, the oh, no. true silver is kind of like healing. Is he going face? Oh dang! Putting on the pressure. I think that's too. Yeah, I that makes a lot of sense. I like it. So so you can, yeah, you can pop your spider. Uh, that's a good great. Riddle. Yeah, that's really good. Um, is there any merit to killing off the two one? Or you just smirk them. You're starting to get a little low, but I think you still have to smirk it up here. Yeah. I think you could consider clearing off the knife juggler because you have to think if you leave that alive, then probably like one or two of your uh, one ones will die just because of it. Yeah, right? but, yeah but you miss damage you, you on might face. be one turn ahead. Yeah. Just because of that two extra damage. I mean, you know, really he doesn't, deal. you know he doesn't have a muster because he would have played it last turn with the um, juggler. And you know he doesn't have a consecrate either, so I think he just like starts smorking it up. Yep. I like it. Chase is the place. <laughs> so Taste the, my skill. <laughs> the one problem with the Game King Hunter is that um, even though like the density of draws is slightly higher because of the pilot shutters and low thebs, that means that Gara will more likely than not like He's more likely to draw dead next turn to like not finish off the game because of those like two pilot shredders that are in addition to that deck compared to like normal face hunters. That's true. Maybe he just cut the pilot shredders in total. Who knows? Okay. Well, if he gets it here, he'll be at eight. He does wow. get it. So do you trade into those, or yeah. like do you want to try to set up for one extra and just hope he bricks? Nope. One extra turn. So he sets up lethal. Does that one damage matter? Um, check for unleash. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, he's dead to unleash if he doesn't kill it. But does he set up for lethal? Let's see. He has five plus. Uh, he also loses <laughs> to more quick shot yeah. combinations if he gets like, quick shot in the owl. Oh, oh no! My goodness. Gara, never lucky. Never lucky. Yeah, so it's the same thing yet again. Just, I guess, like in the end, the quartermasters were useful. Sure. I mean, if it was a muster, the game would have been over a while ago. Yeah, it's actually exactly the one. All calculated. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. So that's got to be like uh, soul wrenching for Gara. Like again, yeah. he seems to be like the weak link in uh, Tempo Storm. And it's like not to any fault of him because I guess he's like running the weaker decks. But again, it was his choice to run Face Hunter, which most people would say is like the weaker Hunter deck right now mm -hmm. compared to like hybrid or mid range. Gara came into uh, today's matches with a record of two and seven. So uh, it was just slightly worse than, uh, or slightly better than Saviz, who was two and eight. Uh, but I believe Saviz went 2 0 today. And uh, Gara didn't start so well, so yeah, they they definitely seem to be the uh, the players that uh, are struggling to pull wins, but also the players who are struggling to pull wins with the uh, the sixth deck, as we have been referring. Exactly, and like just like to top it all off, like it always seems to be that sixth deck, and I think the only instance where it wasn't that sixth deck was in Liquid versus Nalum uh, before with Patron Warrior. It's always been like aggro paladin, mid-range paladin, um, or druid, priest, 
those are like the four type of decks that are have been just like breaking all the time. Also, this face hunter has been breaking all the time. Yeah, face hunter has beat nothing in this entire tournament so far. I, I think like the rationale of bringing a face hunter was that like other people would bring mid range hunter and like handlock, I guess, and like patron warrior or just warrior wouldn't be as common. But yeah. like just like stats wise, mid range hunter and hybrid hunter just straight up win a lot more than face hunter. I think play. I think hybrid is just like way too good. It's just so much better than face in my opinion because you can still just win any any matchup because you're running double freezing and so. Like against Rogue, you win. Against Tempo Mage, you can still win. Whereas face, like, you could lose really easily to those matchups, and you don't put on the pressure unless you like get a perfect curve. I guess I don't know. I feel like uh, it's, uh, hybrid's a lot more forgiving. To to be fair though, Gar's version of Face Hunter is essentially like. I don't think you do. Not when there's one deck you. left. I mean, I guess you're you're squared on one, one deck, but I don't think it's as important whenever there's only one deck left. All right, well, it is Kalento versus Gara. Both these players last week were the uh, the two that really struggled to pull it through. Yeah. Grim Patron versus the Face Hunter. Um, I think uh, the Grim Patron has a pretty nice advantage here, especially going second with a Fiery War Axe. Yeah, you would think so, but like actually, in stats-wise, Face Hunter is actually favored 9-6 to six with a 60% win rate against Patron Warrior. So it's uh, maybe like a little counterintuitive, in it. And, and basically, I think what it comes down to is that sometimes Patron Warrior just like, like doesn't draw well early on, and the Face Hunter can just like still get that advantage. And the problem with typical Patron Warriors is that it doesn't have like too many great comeback mechanics against um, against the Face Hunters. Like they don't have typically they don't have Shield Blocks or Shield Maidens. Do Kalento Mulligan away that um, Dustbite? Yes. What do you think about that? I, I I personally like really like Dust Bite against Hunter because mm -hmm. uh, you can kill like their animal companion. You can just coin into it. Yeah. And I don't know. It just it feels good, and then you can like play Patron on five, or you can just like play anything on five, and you should be fine. But it's interesting he threw it away. Uh, my guess would just probably he, probably be that he's looking more towards like the the unstable ghouls or the like the armor smiths. And if he gets that, he has like a great turn one into turn two play, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Just uh, thinking more about like the like the first few turns, and like that's exactly what I said. Like basically, like the first few turns are where you lose, and not like around turn four or five. What do you think Gara was doing there? Was that just an infuriating turn one play something rope, BM? Got to get his head in the game. <laughs> Doesn't want to lose. I mean, whenever I see that happen against me, I just like. I just like lose my mind sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I get mad. I'm just like, okay, like <laughs> you played your turn. Just like let me play mine. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Kalento looks not impressed, so maybe that <laughs> that does have an effect. Yeah. It's like uh, exactly the same situation that we were kind of referring to in that. Um, oh wow, that's a great that's top a deck. Great draw, yeah. Yeah. So Kalento, if he actually kept his death spite, he wouldn't have gotten that card. So, I, like, in the end, the decision turned out to be correct. Like, you just want to, you kind of just want to curve out well, I guess. Yeah, but and you, now, you get a next turn also. Like, it's not terrible. And you can armor up this turn. Misha. That's pretty good. Yeah, Misha does challenge. Mm, that's Do you draw easy. here? Do you just whirlwind in battle rage and hope he doesn't have a weapon? Yeah, it looks pretty good. You could also go with the Warsong Commander, but that's terrible because you don't have anything, so disregard that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't see it uh, right off the bat like you did, but um, it absolutely seems like the best outcome with the Whirlwind uh, Battle Rage. It is a bit of a risky play, but I mean, isn't this much more of a risky play? Yeah, and besides, I you could execute it the turn after. I like I like playing the worst on here a lot. Forces him to deal with it. Yeah, not really a great way to deal with it either. Ooh, and he's like setting up for a Whirlwind next turn. That's fine. Or some. Okay. Well, it's going to be pretty back and forth here for the next few rounds. Just whirl and play your war song, or do you want to use the execute here? I think a creature is more valuable than execute against face hunter. 
So just World 1 Execute Armor? Yeah, or even Battle Rage. Okay. What now? You maybe consider that uh, because this is not like typical Face Hunter, maybe you want to save the Executes for like that one low dev or maybe even the piloted Shredder. Although, like, just thinking about that, that feels really bad. We also haven't seen that piloted Shredder at all yet. That's true. So far, that's huh. just imaginary. You think you just play the abusive here? Get the body on board? No, he wants to maximize your power, I think. Well, you can still play the abusive. Oh, I see. But I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, that would have sucked. I don't know. Yeah, it would have sucked. Protest <laughs> Protest would have dealt with uh, both creatures with the charge. Um, now it's it turns out to be a much better play. Do you really want a Cruel Taskmaster that? Apparently. I guess so. Are you, are you willing to go against Kalento? <laughs> go toe to toe. On the record? Oh man. <laughs> okay, good sequencing. Almost slipped up there. You have mm. to play the Glaive Zooka first to guarantee the buff on the uh, Arcane okay. Golem. It's looking yeah. really good for Gara now. Exactly. Yep. Quanto needs to top deck something amazing. That's a pretty good draw, though. Yeah, it is. That and, like, Grim Patron's good enough. Yep. And you know it's Snake Trap. The issue is you've used both War Songs, so there's no card that really helps you that much aside from a second Merlin. Or, uh, untypical. Yeah, but still, like, there's no really armor gain oh. in Kalento's deck that helps him that much. Can you play that? <laughs> Yeah, why not? Because, um, because you're just gonna spawn a bunch of patrons, right? But does it matter? Because yeah, even five. If, yeah, even if you spawn a He's bunch of patrons, Armorsmith. Armorsmith has to happen yeah. right now. Oh now my! If you just play acolyte. You run in that into there. Yeah, okay, yeah. do the patrons spawn in between the juggles or only after the juggles? Let the uh, that's a good question. This like situation is so in rare. In between the juggles, in between. You can get well, then you want to you want to attack the three two, right? Instead of the um, the two one. Oh uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Base. Okay, so because you get a whirlwind if you attack oh, the three sucks. two. So they do spawn in between. Yeah. Oh, Gar is so relieved right now. Yeah. Well, I. I have a feeling that's Gara's first win in like five tries or something. <laughs> so no, I, I think, it's, think, I think it's any his, of us would be really relieved there. No, it's his first win in um, something like six games or seven games even. You think it's more curious. than five? Wow. I'm just curious how like the shaman's gonna do. Mm. That's yeah, gonna be the like most difficult deck to win with. I well, feel like. We're gonna have to see uh, pretty soon uh, as Temple Storm is up four points to Cloud Nines two. Um, I mean, it, it looks like a pretty good uh, record for Tempo Storm, but I mean, we have to win with Shaman. Uh, the Warlock's probably going to find a, a way to win, though. Uh, Eloise is probably playing Handlock. I don't, I don't think it was revealed today, was it? It was not, but Eloise is uh, in the Chinese scene. She's very known for playing Handlock, and she played it last week, I believe. Right. So it makes a lot so, of sense. I mean, Handlock can beat up some deck that draws badly. <laughs> it's fine. But the Shaman, though... Um, I really feel the only good matchup the Shaman had was Strife Crow's Paladin, which has already won. Hmm. Yeah. I'm Shaman, not sure. It's actually interesting like that they brought Shaman because Cloud9 is not, knowing to, uh, not known for bringing Druid. And you have to think, like if they bring Druid, it's like one of Shaman's like only best matchups. Uh, I think it's good against like, the Control Warrior, but that's like out uh, now. I think it could be maybe the Mage. Um... The rest is going to be really hard. Like, yeah. Really, really hard. Yeah, Rogue's like a counter. Patron's like a counter. Zoo is pretty bad, but... Zoo's, Zoo's yeah, Zoo's pretty yeah. favored against it, but it can still, like, win. Yeah, it, it could be, we could be Mech Shaman, for all we know, like... Yeah. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah. It's just, um, you guys really seem to think it's mid-range, and I, <laughs> I don't think it's mid-range, but I want it to be mid-range, so... I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hoping you guys are right here. For entertainment's sake, not not one-sided yeah. towards any team, of course. I'm, yeah, I'm not biased here. It's one of my favorite decks, and I know, Dog, like, it's one of your favorite decks. You keep trying to make it work, and <laughs> I don't know how successful you've been, but, like, 
Like, I, I'm sure you like to watch it in action as well. Yeah, for sure. Have you tried with Molten Giants? Because you're always losing. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a Molten bad Giants. philosophy. That's, like this, <laughs> that's the same philosophy as, like, priests are running, like... It, it's kind of the same philosophy as when, like, priests run Thought Steal because, like, all the other cards are better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Is there really much strategy going on at this point, though? I think uh, when, you, when you're on two decks, you just throw whatever you want out there, right? I think you just play whichever deck is best because you're going to need to win with the last deck anyways. And, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, for mm -hmm. example, if like one deck is like favored against all the other four and one deck is unfavored against all the other four, you probably want to play like your better deck just so you can like like if you just so you can like squeeze a win out because again like the game differential does matter in the end yeah, and what if there's variance on that one bad deck or, i mean on the good deck and then like you lose that favored matchup and you only really gave it one chance because you took so many wins with the other one but i guess it doesn't really matter i don't know i'd say you go for the more favored matchup but that's just me okay and so, you'd have to think that's handlock like you probably just want to bring handlock here so if we see Handlock, we'll probably see Kalento bringing out Rogue. But if Kalento... Tempo Mage, uh, probably. Oh, you think so? I would say Tempo Mage is pretty favored against Handlock. But Strifecore has a few cards that are not normally in Tempo Mage that slow it down a little bit more. That's true. Echo which is might kind be of a big worse. problem. Because mm -hmm. you're really playing off that speed at the start. Yeah. Also, in Black Rock Mountain, the uh, mid-range zoo actually statistically favors Handlock, even though like a vast majority of players would say otherwise. It's like actually extremely favored, like 17 to 10, which is 63%. And it might have to do with like maybe the Amp Gang bosses surviving Hellfires or I don't know, something. Okay, well, it is Warlock, Warlock. Peacock staring into my soul. <laughs> well, so is Eloise. <laughs> that one's a little nicer. Yeah. Apparently those are supposed to be cat ears, but I'm still Keep going, with, I'm still going <laughs> with, uh, with rabbits. Uh, Wait, that's whoa. not Eloise. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> whoa. Well, she always jokes that she's Magic Amy, so I guess, I guess we see where that's coming from. Oh, there we go. Okay, we have the correct camera. I mean player. All right, here we go. Um, decent from Ecop, I guess. You obviously throw out the Doctor Boom, but do you keep the Void Walker? It, it feels like it, it doesn't matter if you have a one drop if it only does one damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't you know if it's two damage one drop. Well, you don't know if it's Zoo or Handlock, do you? You don't. Um, yeah. So, for, oh, this for is Eloise. Yeah. Well, I oh, don't this know. Is oh, this oh, is Eloise. Oh, this is Eloise. Oh, it does look like it's Eloise. Okay, yeah, because you keep the Void Walker if you if you're unsure or if you know it's Zoo, but if you do know that it's different. Okay, so it's actually going to be a zoomer. Um, is the Voidwalker even that good against Zoo? Because you do, you don't have an abusive sergeant in your hand, and like typically Zoo, they open with like a uh, flame imp or flame knife imp. juggler. That's true. Um, so, I think it could even be argued that like you might throw that away just to have a higher chance of getting your other one drops. But then again, like Zoos these days, they only run like four one drops plus the two abusive sergeants. The thing so. is, I feel like Ecop had to have a flame imp there because I don't think he would coin juggler because it's too bad against um, abusive. Like a, abusive, yeah. You want to play around that stuff, so you, you can kind of bluff in that aspect. Yeah. It's actually pretty good for Eloise, I would say, just because she has a second juggler into Void Walker, so she gets to juggle on the knife or on the. Um, and it's actually yeah, it's so really, likely. Really, really important. But what if we see the uh, the egg come down here for the potential Argus next turn? It it's just gonna depend on this um this juggle because like if she has double knife juggler and implosion, that's gonna be like <laughs> the bee's knees. <laughs> the bee's knees. Oh man, the bee's I knees. Wonder. So what is what is this playing around? Um, not really sure. It's just developing like, the board. It's not like playing yeah. around anything. It just feels like uh, you like you might want to get out the egg just to play around the um, like the mass juggles or just like at least like one juggle hit. Well, I mean, you're not. I guess. Yeah, I guess that makes some sense. Whoa! Ooh, that's whoa! Important. 
I think no, what's important is this one. The, uh, oh, you go for the Voidwalker because you want to protect it for the implosion, right? And just go for like the double implosion. Yeah, I like oh, that. It's going to hit twice anyway. So oh, the one to four? Yeah, for sure. Oh, oh my god. Oh, god. god. I told you. No That's problem. Disgusting. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> oh my god. And n now without implosion, like this game is. Game over. Like, like, yeah, so you game think over. You, uh, you coin Argus and concede? Wow. That's <laughs> funny. I, I mean, I think Ekop would do that if it weren't like if this weren't a if team. This weren't a team league, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, attack in to the flame imp, and then attack to the egg, and then implosion. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, and then just hope he doesn't yeah. have hellfire or something. Yeah, seems good. Well, this is like four. the absolute dream four. here. Get four. four. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think this is this is actually <laughs> <laughs> this is actually good for Ekop because like all his bad RNG is coming out right now, right? Yeah, yeah it's a little like or like <laughs> it's like a fireball. So I guess a fireball I'll eight damage find to face. Doomguard in a knife juggler and still die, right? <laughs> he's not dead. No, no. If he if he coins the Doom Guard into a knife juggler, he survives. If the other <laughs> remaining juggler is merciful. <laughs> right? I That's wonder. six. Yeah. If he does that, there's still a one in four that he dies to the juggles. I think Eloise needs to play Mad Bomber <laughs> with that type of RNG. Yeah. Oh my god. It's ridiculous. Mm. Now you have to do it because then you play Doomguard and like Eloise is going to disconnect and she doesn't have Lethal on board. So they have to play over again, you know? I have to extend it. Ah, so. All the way to the rope. That's right, Ekop. You got this. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why Ekop is taking so long. This is his best chance to win. To yeah, maximizing fair. his win rate. Oh. Alright. Well, Ekop gets uh, completely smashed by the RNG gods. <laughs> yeah, but uh -huh. you know what? This happened last series. Uh, t Liquid went up 5 2 against Nolum, but Nolum still came back. And I think it's even more likely here because of mid range shaman. <laughs> well, uh, we mech. don't know yet. We don't know. I, yeah. Okay. If it's if it's mech, it's it's probably gonna win a game. Like yeah. they're just they're just unstoppable openers from from that deck, and it's just unlikely that you fail to get that. What four times in a row? Okay, it's somewhat unlikely. It's Gara, <laughs> so I mean I don't know. It's it's possible. But yeah, Cloud Nine struggling a bit here. Again, if uh, if Tempo Storm does take the point, uh, they're about even in uh, the team standings, um, which is a good position for Tempo Storm because otherwise they would basically be out. I think it's very difficult to uh, come back from a, a zero three start. Well, the thing is, you just like you don't have to be last because the last place doesn't even get the redemption shot. You're just out of the tournament. So yeah. as long as you're like top seven, like it's okay. Like sure, it might be bad if you're in the bottom like two or whatever. But still, as long as you're in the top uh, seven, you still have a chance for the money, right? Or the the glory, I guess. All right. Well, if Tempo Storm right now is currently in the bottom two, so they're That's yeah. True. <laughs> and uh, if if they do lose this one, they will secure a spot to be either last or tied for last. So <laughs> uh, we, we are there. Yeah, we are there. And it's on Gara again. Um, Gara has been uh, not only playing these like weird decks, but he's had to be the closer. Uh, just like you, just have to get that last win, and he has not been good at that. Um, and that's been really a big problem. Uh, I mean, the way I see it is, you, you take a look at a team like Nylon, you take a look at a team like Tempo Storm. They both like usually have a nice lead, and uh, RDU has like pulled out those clutch wins every time. And Gara has like failed to win that game that he needed every time, and I'm not. It's not really anything on Gara, but it's you know that uh, that small change in circumstance uh, is the difference between the top of the top of the uh, tournament or the bottom of the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe it is on Gara because he's bringing such weird decks, you know. But like last week he brought Priest, but then again you couldn't really blame him too much for bringing Priest because just yeah. like. A few days before, he did really well with Priest in the yeah. uh, HTC Recharge tournament. Priest is good. I like Priest. It's a good deck. Good deck. Mm -hmm. 
Shaman, maybe a different story, but I think like number one legend right now is Shaman or something. Um, yeah, I, I saw that post on Reddit, but I think that he got ranked number one legend at the beginning of the season, and it just uh, took him like a week to like write an article on oh it. Oh my goodness! Ugh. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Yeah. Also, um, like the priest that he played uh, around the same time that you had some success with priest dog was was a different one. He was playing like the typical mm -hmm. control priest while you were playing the death lord priest. What's your yeah. take on the differences between the two in the current meta? Um, I feel like the Light Bomb Priest is just better because you can... you can Okay, so I like my win rate against Rogue is like 90%. I don't know how. It's just like, it just it crushes them because they try to play like a few units. Most of these decks that you're playing against are like combo decks, so they don't have a lot of units, right? So if you Light Bomb just the few units that they do have, they can't really develop very much. Whereas like the other priests, you try to fight for board a lot and take initiative. But I feel like that's kind of harder because they're just going to clear your board with like a sweeper and then probably combo you down. But yeah, we'll see. This Shaman deck is going to be pretty exciting. I hope so. It's going to have to beat the Zoo. Um, I think Zoo is one of those... Like I think all the matchups are bad as we talked about. But I think the, the Zoo Warlock is one that like... I'm pretty sure I've won a few times myself. <laughs> So I like it. It doesn't feel like hopeless. Yeah, for sure. I think this is one of the better matchups that he could have gotten. Although I think they were just, they don't know what type of challenge oh, okay. it is. So now, now we know it's mech. It is mech. Mm -hmm. So things are just like, like suddenly starting to look a lot better for Gar. Yeah. Uh, overall, yeah. But doesn't the mech shaman kind of suck against the zoo warlock? Yeah. But it's better against the other matchups, and I think what Cloud9 right. was trying to do here is they were just trying to scout the deck, because the mulligan's the same regardless for Zoo. Mm -hmm. So, um, they just wanted to, like, scout the deck, that way um, Patron, like, doesn't get rid of their Fiery War Axe or something, or right, uh, right. things like that. I think it's pretty smart to try to scout the deck first, especially when just Zoo is the same mulligan's all this. Yeah. I think and, uh, and, also... Zoo's favored in both. So. Yeah. Uh, it's also... Oh, man. What a... Oh, lightning bolt. Double lightning bolt. Oh, that's interesting. Lightning bolt is typically not in Mech Shaman. It's just like a Gara addition. Hmm. But uh, also, Zoo seems to be like... It's also like slightly favored against both. So you want to send out like the deck that um, yeah. is going to be like get, getting the wins out. You want to... Basically, you want to send out your decks from strongest to uh, least strong. Just to get the number of wins so that you win in the game differential at the end of the season. All right, well, anything he plays is uh, going to fall to Abusive Sergeant, I'd imagine. And I don't think we're going to see Lightning Bolt. So um, what do we what do we have die first? Um, I would imagine it's probably going to be the Mech Warper. It seems the most solid. And if you can follow up with a Yeti, you might take a board lead, which is how you're yeah. supposed to win this game. But I don't think that ever actually happens. Yeah. One drop as well. Dang. Sick. Poor Mech Shaman. <laughs> It's just the double lightning bolts are really, really bad. You always wanted to be drawing into your units first as opposed to the spells. Yeah, it's interesting right. he didn't keep the uh, Gar actually mulligan the way the rock biter. A rock biter, yeah. I'm not sure if that's right or not. Because like lightning bolts just significantly worse. It's not that he was looking for, it's just that he got it, you know? Yeah, it's much better to take some damage uh, oh. off the back end of a rock Whoa. biter than it is to. Um... This is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this than is to overload really yourself. You think they're unbounds in the stack? Unbound elemental, making a comeback. Oh my goodness! Like who knows at this point? Like maybe there's a Dune Mall Shaman. Maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah. No, no chance. The, Come on. The thing is, like, uh, <laughs> so much it's synergy, also though. it's also <laughs> weird that there's mechanical Yeti in this deck because typically, like, the four drops you want are the Fire Guard Destroyers and the piloted uh, Shredders. So I have to guess he at least has like some of the other two. Hmm. Well, he can he can lightning bolt here, and then he can do mech warper into Whirling's Zapmatic next turn. I think you have to play a drop this turn. I think you have to play mech warper this turn, or the Whirling Zapmatic, and next turn you can just go Yeti into lightning bolt, whatever threat he plays. Yeah. The real issue is that uh, I think Implosion will at, at least if it doesn't get a two drop or if it doesn't hit for two. I think it'll almost like seal the game because Mech Shaman has like basically no way to deal with a lot of one ones. I just like removing all that stuff from the board. Like you're always like thinking about artists here. 
if you like you can tell. Do play around Argus. Yeah, but you can tell that like Gar is taking this so seriously right now. <laughs> well, it is it is a very serious <laughs> game to win. I like the mech corporate, yeah. Next one you can follow it up with. Like, if it doesn't die, you could even get, like, a huge board, but... Yeah. So, just implosion, right? Seems so solid enough. Get two? Yeah, Which if you get... to get because you're right. ECOP. No, no, you're, you're gonna get four because all your bad luck has been used in the last game. No, it hasn't. Alright, what, what do you guys think he's gonna get? I think he's gonna get a three. Yeah, I I'm would've guessed two. three as well. I'm gonna go two. three. Ah. <laughs> All right. I concede. I concede. <laughs> but this isn't that bad for Gara because he can go um, Mech Yeti into Lightning Bolt on that. Next turn. This attack's actually really important from Ecop. Mm. Saves him an imp if he does attack. Yeah. I'd be impressed if he attacks. I'm not sure that I would. Okay. Here comes Rock Biter again. Not much use here. Um, I mean, <laughs> just look at this board state. Like, you know who wins here. You already <laughs> know. It's not just the board state, but like the spells in Gar's hand just are not good against it. Yeah. But you know, like, like uh, Dog said, Agar will somewhat be able to take a board lead here, and if somehow Ekop he doesn't draw into like any ways to activate the egg, then maybe there's some hope. <laughs> I don't know. I think even if he just throws out the Doom Guard next turn, there's like yeah. no hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Those double lightning bolts so bad. Uh, this is why I don't like Mech Shaman. I feel like if you just don't curve out really early and you draw into like your spells or whatever. Really, really bad, especially against like kind of aggroish decks, and that's why ladder. That's why there's not too much mech shaman on ladder. I feel like on ladder you can't play decks like this because there's just too much aggro. I've never really seen mech shaman with overload cards. Like that's the true. overload cards they run are ones they use to kill the opponent. Yeah, you kind of feel like the uh, like the the feral spirits is really weird because typically mech shaman is an offensive deck, but feral spirits is very defensive in nature. Mm. Was Doom Guard just like a s really stupid play here? <laughs> Two? Three. Two. Oh. Gar is like, ah, oh, there's hope. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, maybe not. That's a really the good rusty horn. Part. <laughs> Value. Wrecked. <laughs> Urshock would be nice. Yeah, but like something oh. had to come out of this deck oh, for those God. lightning bolts and stuff, so. It wasn't the mechs. I well, think it was cards like Earthshock. Well, it could have been like uh, like the f the lava bursts and the crackles. That's true. He could have just replaced them with lightning bolts. Is there like you really replace crackle with a lightning bolt? Like, what do you gain I don't, from that? I don't. Think so like but maybe you gain like uh like you, you make the, the aggro matchups. So. Yeah, you could put like there's usually one lava burst, but there's like Ekop has like or sorry, Gara has like two lightning bolts and a feral spirits in his hand. But I think what Gara might be trying to do is that he's trying to make his deck more anti-aggro. So that's why he might have cut the crackles in favor of like cards like Feral Spirit and Lightning Bolt. But it's like not working too well for him because I think sometimes like you just have to give up those like aggro matchups. Just go for like the matchups that you're good against. I would say he just cut the lava burst. It makes the most sense to me. I mean, you're spending five mana for five damage, whereas Lightning Bolt is two mana for three damage. So it's not as bad. Freeze the one. <laughs> oh my Whoa. God. Value. Oh, oh, is there actually. Wait, is there actually merit to freezing the O2 there? I was thinking about that as well, but. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so because it doesn't matter. The imps could trade yeah, into the 3 2. It's already so activated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Do not juggle tap, maybe? Oh, it looks mm -hmm. like he's, I don't know about yeah, Doom Guard. It looks like here. he's Doom Guarding here. Yeah. It seems like a pretty good hand. I mean, the knife juggler into. Flame Imp. It seems pretty well, good as well. Actually, Gar has pretty good answers. It's just that he has no cards left against the Sham uh, against the Warlock, who's at thirty life. So the best case scenario is Gara top decks Doctor Boom, 
And then I think he would like be in a decent position so if that happens. He can't play Doctor Boom. He has to play with his hand next turn. No, no, he just has to play with his hand next turn. Oh, uh, okay. Like next turn, because he's gonna keep the spell damage totem. He has the flame tongue, the spell damage totem, kill the egg, use the lightning bolt on the four attack. Uh, use the lightning bolt on the doom guard and use the rock fighter on face to kill the flame imp. So he has to use every card in his hand this turn. So you oh, go. Okay, that's so you actually go. Really good. I don't know that you play that. You go flame tongue. You trade into the um, zero yeah. two, and yeah. then you lightning bolt the um, thing that comes out, and then you lightning bolt. So the, yeah, wait, Gara can win this because there's only going to be two imps left on the board, and Gara can can you make a totem as well? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, you can, right? Yeah. So if he gets like a taunt or something. Then he has the flame tongue up with a zero two and a taunt, so that'd be pretty good. Yeah. Yep. I don't think Ecop should have played the Doom Guard there, but that's just my opinion. I don't know. He was, he must have been really scared of the Whirling Zapomatic. So I don't strange. blame him. Yeah. I think I would have made exactly the same play in Ecop's shoes. Yeah, I think uh, like Ecop was really. I don't focused. understand what there's to think about here though. Like yeah. what? But, whoa. Whoa, whoa! Whoa! No! Oh my gosh! All right, okay. that's fine. That's I think he's fine, but like, I think that was a little better. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Ekop is just basically he, or rather, Gar is hoping that Ekop doesn't have any way to activate this egg in future turns. But like, here's the thing: like, you still have to get this egg activated, or you yeah. still have to go through the egg somehow. You have to go through the taunt, also. Like, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just kind of difficult. It's not a good draw. Like, do you even pop the egg now? Probably not. Maybe you just uh, play the flame tongue and the whirling zapomatic and sit. Yeah, it seems good. If like if we went for the other play on this turn, it would be facing like um, a spell power totem plus the um, the flame tongue totem, right? Plus and a, then plus a random totem, and you could totem this turn and play both up. Oh, uh, you couldn't totem both up; you'd be overloaded too much. But you could uh, yeah, just load up. up. Yeah. Well, That's I guess fine. he's thinking about positioning and attacking. I think attacking is obviously a mistake. I think positioning yeah. beside the taunt is best. I don't, yeah. Like if you're getting BGH, you're getting BGH anyway. <laughs> Bane of Doom. Oh jeez. That's really good. Do you Bane of Doom the taunt? Or do no. you Bane of Doom the 3-2? Three 3-2. Two? Three two. Does it really matter too much? No, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Well, no, it might matter. What if you get Malganus? Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, you don't you don't well, trade it first, obviously. Okay, yeah. No, if you if you get Malganus, then a one one kills. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. The two two without dying. Okay, that's like slightly above average, I'd say. That's pretty good, actually. There's some merit to just kill the two two taunt with Lothab here, because your board is so well protected. Yeah. And I think right now it's just going to be the Warlock Hero Power taking over. I like this. Yeah. Yeah, let's just attack into that a few times. So nice. there is the Crackle. Crackle. So Crackle, Lothab, Totem, Hope for Taunt. And then Trade. I guess healing wouldn't be terrible. That's pretty bad. Yeah, probably the, the worst one. All right, any cops able to uh, clear that up pretty easily? And That's... GG. Well, oh, game over. <laughs> oh wow, even that too. Uh, the death wing will come out, and then you guys will. Be sad. <laughs> yeah. So, at this point, this like like we've talked about before, this might be one of those situations where. Um, I think Gara might just be better off conceding just to not show off the rest of his deck because his deck is just so weird and we haven't seen anything yeah. like it before. Two flame tongues? So that's also like an addition because you typically don't see two flame tongues in Mech Shaman. It's usually just one. And really? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's usually yeah. just one. And no, um, zero. We've seen zero. Yeah, we've seen zero as well. Um, but also, it's, it's kind of weird because you typically with like a lot of with flame tongues, 
you probably want a lot of low, lower tier minions, like one drops and two drops. But you're running like double lightning bolt as well, so it doesn't like seem like that synergizes as well. The thing is, the only reason to keep playing is like saying that you have a lightning storm, right? I just don't understand. How do you do 16 damage? Yeah. Wait, is all no, 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 actually, wait. If he doesn't die in two turns, can he win with Doomhammer into Rockbiter? Maybe that's what he's thinking. And then the, sh the Warlock has to tap once and not yeah, play Yeah, exactly. I don't think Ecop is capable of doing that sequence of plays. Mm -hmm. That is, that would be really, oh. No, he's gonna, he's gonna taunt, he's fine. Okay, well then he has to like not play the taunt. Oh, he played the taunt, all right. Oh man, game see. over. Like something else could be like Alakir. Uh, no, not Alakir wouldn't do it, but yeah. I actually there think Gara was thinking about exactly that sequence. Because I mean, what what else would have really done it? There's there's like nothing. I don't know. Uh, it looks like Gara has a really long road ahead of him right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. he does. Well, at least it's Mech Shaman, so he can beat like... Uh, is he it? can beat the warrior. <laughs> is it? Is it Mech Shaman? We I don't see know the Feral We saw the Feral Spirits and the Lightning Bolt, but we saw Whirling's Automatic, Mech Warper, and... Um, Mech right, but, but here's what we didn't see. We didn't see a Neutron, which like protects the Whirling Zapomatic and wins you the game. We didn't see Fel Reaver, which wins you the game. He might have cut the Fel Reavers. He might have cut all the um, 8 drops to be anti-BGH. That's possible. Yeah, Fel Reavers. Um, we didn't even see Fire Elementals or like um, the Alakir's, Dr. Boom, Ragnaros are like some of the typical ones we see from Mech Shaman. So I have to say, like, I think that deck might have been like decent against Zoo, even like better than like most Mech Shaman decks, but it still just wasn't enough. Yeah. I don't know. I feel it certainly has some matchups that it basically has almost no chance of winning, even with a really good draw, at least from what we saw out of the deck so far. Yeah, um, going back to that like one key turn, if uh, Gar had played it out slightly differently, he might have like, he would have taken board control first of all, and then it would have been really hard yeah. for Ekop to take it back. Well, Dr. Boom was drawn like two turns later, so mm -hmm. maybe not. Yeah, but it would, I think, would have had to been a race, basically. Yeah, the game would have drawn out a lot more, and as a result, the Warlock would have taken a lot more damage. So, um, yeah, I think that was the line of play that Gara could have won with, but I, I still think it was very yeah, unlikely to. He probably would have lost still, but. Probably would have lost, yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah. that's one deck Could've down, been. and Gara just uh, has to win against one of these three other ones. Well, Kalento did have uh, one of the worst showings last week as well. Yeah. And in hmm. fact, Kalento, he lost to Mech Mage against Brian Kibler in the uh, first match between Cloud9 and Value Town. Mech Shaman. What's Kalento's record right now? Does so anyone record? Uh, was, I'll bring it up here in a second. It was, he was 0-4, 2-0, and then 0-1. So that's 2-5 right now. 2-4. Uh, Two and three as well. well so on, uh, no, he lost once today, so it's two five now. Oh, I see. How did he have a, yeah, yeah, have a bad showing last week then? No, he had a good showing. He went two zero yeah, last yeah. week. Okay, yeah. The, yeah. the first week he yeah he went zero four. That's right. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I get I get to mix up a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, like, if your last two players are Kalento and Stripeco, like, you got to be feeling like pretty good, right? <laughs> I mean, Gar is a very very good player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so. it's it's actually funny because Gar is like one of the only players that practices with Kalento and also practices with Strife Crow. So fr from what I actually hear, like Gara practices with like these two players, or rather Kalento practices with Gara more than like pretty much anyone else. Yeah, I think that's the case as well. <laughs> Tempo Mage. Tempo Mage should beat Max Shaman, right? That seems like a good matchup. Uh, the thing is, like Tempo Mage is such a new deck, and Mech Mate or yeah, Mech Shaman is like, it, it feels like they're they're they don't play against each other enough that you, like it's really hard to see how that matchup would play out, right? Hmm. But you know what, Strife Crow's um, Strife Crow's um, Tempo Mage it runs double arcane missiles, so I guess that might help a bit in the matchup. It looks like he's going for Rogue. Rogue yeah. should be fine so long as um. Like, the reason why Rogue is usually unfavored against Mech Shaman 
is because usually they're like Fell Reavers or like Ragnaros or Boom, things that Rogue really can't deal didn't with. Didn't see we, any of that. Yeah, we didn't see that from Kara's Shaman. So. so double Crackle as well. So he runs double Lightning Bolt, double Crackle, double Rockbiter weapon. He must have just cut the Lava Burst. It makes the most sense. Yeah. Maybe even like cutting Earth Shocks there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we didn't see any of those. Yeah, it definitely hurt the against the Zoom matchup, but I think it definitely could help here because most rogues these days they don't run Van Cleef. Well, I'm just I mean, I don't really know what to call here. I mean, we've seen so many strange cards out of Gara. We we know there's probably more strange cards in there. And yeah. you can't I mean, there's thirty cards in these decks. It's not like he's playing a thirty eight card <laughs> deck. So like I'm, I'm even afraid to call this like a mech shaman because it would probably play so differently. This is oh, he, here's a new card, Doom Hammer. It's actually really yeah. important in this matchup and Lothab yeah. as well. Do you go for the greed coin mech warper? Is that greedy or is that just how you have to play this deck to get wins? I don't think you have to play the deck like that. Okay, but looks like he's going for it. Clonto's hand is actually really, really good. Um, Prep eviscerates really important against uh, Mech Shaman. Yeah, especially so much with the better than the gen. Exactly. 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 Yeah, that's probably like one of the like, like back when uh, Vice teachers were more used in Rogue, it's pretty much like the blowout play against Druid, for example. Like um, Vice teacher Prep eviscerate or Vice teacher Prep sap. Like Druid just like can't deal with that typically. Mm -hmm. And I would it I, I think like. The mech shaman would also be hard pressed, except with something like a crackle that just happens to deal at least five damage. Ooh, oh, out. that's a good draw. Yeah. Keeping the totems in check. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's not that important, but uh, yeah. you know he has double flame tongue, right? Yeah, yeah and I just think this, <laughs> this might be over. Oh my goodness, this prep of this is so devastating. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like we hate Sorry to call it. That. Yeah, exactly. We hate to call it so early, but like, like, what can Mech Shaman do here? Like, there's no lightning storms in this deck, most likely. And most like, likely. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have to temper that with most likely, but basically, I don't think Quanta uh, will ever let go of this board. Uh, this Shredder hope for some shenanigans. I have no idea. I mean, if you Shredder, you might be able to start clearing the board with Doomhammer. And if Kalanto bricks and just draws like prep and like some other useless card, maybe. Yeah, in terms of value, like if Kalanto draws nothing from now on, it seems like the Shaman might have a chance. Kalanto's drawn really well this game though, like really, really well. Yeah. He's curving out really nicely. I mean, isn't this like just the best you could hope for? I can't think of like any other cards that he would rather have than what he's gotten so far. Oh, he doesn't want to play the SI. I guess I guess he might as well just trade in the three three, right? Yeah. I've noticed that like, just in tournaments, just people really, really want to play on curve, even if it seems like a bit suboptimal. Mm -hmm. I think there's just some hidden value in in playing on curve and having cards that are a bit cheaper. Maybe you can play more of them at a later time in the game. I think overall that kind of works out better statistically. I don't I don't know if playing on curve is too important whenever you have one card in hand, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I agree with you. Playing on curve is pretty important. Yeah. You have to up that mana utilization statistic, right, dog? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. That's super important. Uh well I'm looking at a Doom Hammer attack twice into a shredder and get a Doomsayer, right? Or are, are we you, there yet? Are you that behind? Like I mean maybe Kalento has I feel like you're that behind right now. Okay. I would not fault him for making that play. You could go for the Lothab this turn, but ultimately you you can't make that play. You can't hope for the Doomsayer next turn because you're not going to have enough health to Doom Hammer it twice. Mm -hmm. So basically, at that at that point where you're going for the Doomsayer, you're saying that I have less than like a one in sixty percent chance of yeah, yeah one in a sixty one out of sixty seven or something. Mm -hmm. Yep, I would say that. Well, with this play, you can maybe Doom Hammer next turn. Maybe. Oh my god. Oh, look at that. That's it's a pretty, good card. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Uh, so, so what, what can you do? 1-1 one, one into the shield, 4-3 into the Anoyatron, 3-5 uh, into the 
heal your vile teacher and SI kill the. You could just leave up the the three four. I think the the most important part here is like just to try to get get that um just like try not to get that vi the pilot shredder dead because like it does seem like the only way you can lose is the doomsayer. Mm. Like save like as much life as possible on it. So with that line of thought, you probably don't want to trade your four three into the three four, I guess. And like no matter what else you do, it seems pretty fine. I don't mind just going face here, putting him on a clock. Yeah, that's what he's doing. It's interesting, he chose to. Oh, he's killing it. Okay, I was gonna say it's. Oh no, he's not killing it. It's interesting he chose to not sacrifice the one one. And here it comes. Doomsday time. <laughs> Is there any other like super brick? There's like explosive sheep brick enough. Um. No, probably not. Well, you have the doom hammer, right? So you can lightning bolt it, and then doom hammer oh, yeah. that, that and then sense. you can clear off all but two. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to start this turn off with trading into the pilot shredder. There's just, there's just no other way well, to you, play you would this. Play like, the lightning bolt. Okay. Yeah, I think the lightning bolt is better. Hmm. Well, if, if you lightning bolt and he gets like some bad zero attack something, you could like flame time kill the battle teacher as well. Okay, so again, spell damage. Spell damage. Gar is going for, I guess, the safer play altogether. I, can fix I guess this hmm. is pretty reasonable, actually, right? Oh. Uh, I mean, if the rogue drew prep there, I still think R would have lost. <laughs> Which would have been the worst draw for Colento. Yeah, the life lead is just unimaginable here. And that doom hammer uh, serves uh, not not a big purpose when the rogue is now finally down to 29. Do you think Gara should have made the play if, uh, turn one to coin out that mech warper? I mean, what are the odds he has the uh, the backstab, right? Mm. I felt like if he would have coined that out, the game would have been significantly different. But How so? at the same time, like, you kind of have to go for that, right? Yeah, I, I feel. I mean, I I agreed with his play, even though he got punished and wrecked and he lost. Mm -hmm. Maybe happens. that's why I don't play those decks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm like, well, I'm like, oh, if I do this, I lose immediately. If like he has the backstab, so I don't really <laughs> want to do this, but. Yeah. I think there might have been some merit to holding on to the Mech Warper if he had like multiple other two drops in his hand so he could play like a huge Mech Warper turn. But like just looking at that game, if he'd save the Mech Warper for turn two perhaps, I think the same res exact result would have happened. Like the Avi Teacher prep eviscerate, right? And yeah. I think it was just like down to Kalenta just having the nuts in that game. Not really Gara's fault at all, yeah. not even the deck's fault. I mean, realistically, Kalento used every single mana crystal effectively like until every the turn. seventh turn. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, you can't really fault much of that game. Uh, most of it lies on the fact that I really think that Shaman deck isn't so great. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I think most people would agree with you, especially like after watching those last two games. And we've actually seen this quite a lot from Gar, where he brings like these weird decks, but it just doesn't happen to pan out well and not just in the Archon League but oftentimes in um, just like random leagues like maybe even in the uh, NEL League that you're in, in dog did that ever happen sometimes did whatever happen that that he like just brought a really weird deck and it just um like, not really didn't do well we would just we always discuss the decks to bring before and it always worked out pretty well for us um, I think I don't I don't think this deck is as bad as we're making out to be it's Literally just to me, it's it's mech shaman with two lightning bolts in it, and as opposed to double lava burst. So I, I don't see how that would make a difference. If those were lava bursts in those so, games, it wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah. But then again, we haven't seen like fell reaver. The feral Dr. spirits, is the, yeah. The feral, yeah, both feral spirits are the only thing that are. Yeah. If it's feral spirits over fell reaver, and we haven't even seen a power mace. 
I don't. Yeah. That's true. I don't know why he wouldn't bring power. Power mace is the reason why you run like max shaman. Yeah. It could just be really bad draws. All right, so this is like kind of like the battle of like the creative decks here. That's not Strife Girl, that's Kalento. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really know, like this image of Garda there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks to be in like somewhat pain. Yeah. Right? Well, he, but, pro he probably is. Yeah. But because we see this Ragnaros in Strife Girl's hand, this leads to me, leads me to believe that this Tempo Mage is indeed based off of like the Null Temple Mage, uh, K-N-O, instead of like the Hyunher Temple Mage that everyone was running like a month ago. This is kind of like the more modern vines, modernized version of Temple Mage, and it basically runs Rag over Antonidas and mm -hmm. more Arcane Missiles in it. Why wouldn't you just run both? Um, Rag because and like, Antonidas. I mean, cut the Echo and add that in. I feel like that yeah. gives you just as much value, but maybe yeah, I'm wrong. But uh, that deck doesn't run Echo. I think that's oh, just okay. like Strifeco's own little, you know, creation. Well, Strifeco goes for the highest tempo play. Uh, Fortune for him is the only one that doesn't get wrecked. Um, and that kind of invalidates uh, Gara's hand. And he realizes <laughs> it. He's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. The, the mirror. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good impression. <laughs> yeah. Um, the mirror images are like the most important card right now, for sure. Like, keeping Strifeco alive. Oh, it's so funny, like, Gara finally gets a good hand with this deck, and it's it's punished because Strifecore has, like, the one thing. Like, what I else mean, it, What else counters that? There's, like, nothing else. If you're Strifecore, what do you do here? Do you draw? No, you ping. You ping? Yeah, you get the mech off the board. Yeah, but what if he just plays another mech? Then you're behind. I guess next turn you can flame cannon and ping? Yeah. Perhaps. I guess that works. Oh. Looks like he's just gonna go with the flame cannon? Oh, it's like the least value flame cannon ever. Yeah, and he didn't even, huh? Oh, hmm. see, lightning bolt to get past those mirror. Oh, and you guys were insulting it. Uh, How <laughs> good that is! If he had that turn one thing, I actually awesome. don't even think you play it. I think you play yeah, the you spider don't. tank. Yeah, yeah he's a spider tank. Yeah, so Strife Crow not playing on curve last turn. That was Maybe. a little strange to me. Yeah. It's like pretty much the same as if he had pinged last turn, basically. Um, I, I'd argue that in like either case, it was basically the same thing, mm, which yeah. is bad. Exactly, you'd so rather if, have the if, card. <laughs> yeah, than the if, the, if the best case was the same as the ping, then you'd want Flame Cannon in your hand. <laughs> I still think you have the Spider Tank here. Yeah. You just saw Flame Cannon. He probably would have used two if he had to. I mean, if he has flame cannon, so what? Let him use it. Yeah. You still kill the three one when you're one two now. I can understand why it's taking so long because I would also be confused by Strife Crow's play. Yeah. <laughs> and Strife Crow this turn, he's like, "Oh, I really wish I had a flame cannon now." <laughs> Do you play the flame weaker? Strife Crow's hand is really good. Also, I, I think that was a pretty big misstep. Mm. Yeah, he's like not drawing into any of like the dead cards in his deck, which are quite a lot, I would say. Like the Echoes, the um Drakes and stuff. Yeah, Drakes, Ragnaros, Doctor Boom. Yeah. I think this what is does that one. do? It's uh, fine. You, you, you hope that it survives and then it might do something next turn. Yeah, but if it doesn't survive, you basically lose the game. Well, it also this situation is kind of interesting because now play you just let yeah. him go off. Really? Like if you don't play Shredder, yeah, I like Shredder too because like mm -hmm. if you don't like if you don't develop the board, you're gonna be behind anyway, I guess. Next turn you can deal with it with Shredder into something else, and Shredder contests it pretty mm -hmm. well. Yeah, just by okay. itself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And like here. if if you don't play the Shredder, then how are you gonna kill this Flame Waker anyway? It's gonna be like a little ridiculous unless you roll the Spell Power Toto. No, you can, so you can rock fighter the, the three four and attack into it for six. Mm -hmm. That's okay as well. Uh, I mean, you already saw a mirror image. Are you just like expecting uh, arcane missiles or something? You probably would have used that turn one. Yeah, I don't know if I like that attack. Oh, so 
That's Sorcerer a good one. intellect, I guess. Hope for M missiles. That seems right. Yeah, hope for just something you can play. Um, missiles and, or secret mirror, mirror image would be pretty insane here. Almost. almost. Oh, oh, just a little off. Ooh, okay. double spoof. That's it's looking good for Gara now. That's for sure. I think I like the lightning bolt over the rock biter because uh, he has the yeah, whirling probably. zapmatic in hand. We know he has doom hammer. Yeah, I like it as well. We and haven't seen uh, anything above yeah, six also. So. Exactly, exactly. So he's probably going to curve out pretty well here. It looks like he wants the whirling up. Yep. I think that's okay too. Yeah, it seems good. Taunt totem is actually really important as well. That's a good one. Rock fighter, interesting. Well, yeah, okay. he sees it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it doesn't really make too much sense that you would use the rock fighter here. Well, next turn you'd be able to use the. Uh, you're overloaded next turn, so you're forced to play Shredder, and next turn you'd be able to play the uh, other thing. Well, Strife Crow is. Um, is basically down to one play here, I feel. Yeah. Like it's it's Flame Waker Frostbolt on I guess you can if you think you're you're totally screwed, I guess you can go for the shredder. I think you go for the three two and hope that one of your things hits uh four three. That seems fun. Yeah. Yeah. The Tempo Mage is is a deck that is often um, dominating or dominated. And uh, like, there's very few back and forth games. Uh, right now, Str Strife Crow is at like a massive disadvantage. Yeah, it's basically like if you can get a Flame Waker or like a Mana Worm behind Mirror Images, or you don't. So this is like the less risky play, I guess. I don't know. I think he wants to save like his Flame Waker for like more potential later on. Gara's got this. Easy believe, shredder. Believe in your boy Gar. <laughs> yeah, I like the shredder too, but I think the totem is okay as well. Like you push for eight here. I really don't like the totem. I think that's. I think that's kind of silly. I don't think it's silly because like it basically forces Strife Crew to use uh, direct damage to kill it, or he's gonna he's gonna lose the game. So if Strife Crew has direct damage, would you rather him kill a shredder or your totem? I think it's pretty close. Well, the shredder has a death rattle, so you'd get that. But I, I guess you, I guess it's like having charge. I, yeah. I just feel like you can get value from flame tongue next turn, also, because you're gonna have such a sticky board. There's no way he clears it, so it's fine to hold yeah. it. But there is merit in playing it, I guess. Emperor and pray. Yeah, uh, emperor. Hope uh, your opponent thinks it's a taunt that it soaks <laughs> up at least five damage. I mean, it is kind of a taunt. I, I think. You kind of have to. You can trade. Like, it's fine. Oh no! Oh. Base. Well, game over here. Base is the place, Peace, boys. I would have expected Gar to have like a stronger reaction here because, like, you got to think that that pretty much locks out the game, right? Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't see what what happens here. What could Strife Crow have here? No, no, just no. Yeah. Someone to DDoS Gar, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> don't Something jinx like it. That. Don't jinx well, it. No, even if Gar disconnects, I think it would be ruled in his well favor played. because yeah, I don't okay. think there's any possible outcome that he could well stay alive there. Interesting. So Tempo yeah. Storm. No, like you can't even fireball a Shredder to get a Doomsayer. Yeah. I method. really, wa I want to see Gar's celebration here when he does win. <laughs> like it has to be like such a huge relief well, for him. Why hasn't he celebrated already? Is what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. Okay. The well, there he goes, guys. Coffee. Tempo Storm takes that that <laughs> very elusive sixth win in this uh, best of eleven team format. Um, Tempo Storm is now on a record of one and two, and they pushed Cloud Nine to the one and two bracket as well. Um, that basically means uh, the teams are are still alive, uh, which which is interesting. Um, I, I'd like to see the close battles. I'd like to see all the teams have a chance to qualify to the next stage. And uh, we're still in that stage yet. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, with all the teams going pretty much one and three, except for a few outlier teams like Nilhalem and possibly Forsen Boys, um, yeah, we might see like, we might see like two groups here, but it definitely seems to be like everyone's.
pretty much clumping around the same position. And and that kind of like you can kind of relegate that to like just being Hearthstone. Like it's a bit RNG based, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I think it was due time that Gara actually won when he needed to at the uh, at the end of a pretty close series. So uh, good for him. Uh, although I had, i be honest, I had extreme doubts it was possible. <laughs> I, I had but, to agree uh, with you there, but yeah. like I was actually kind of rooting for Gar here. Like he's definitely like one of the players that like cares the most if he wins or not. Like he gets very emotional when he loses, obviously, and like I think like he really cares about this team, like because like he is a very much a team player. He's like a very like a Tempo Storm player at heart, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, we can see from the standings there, uh, Tempo Storm is in fact ahead of Cloud Nine. Um, if it would have been a, a six-five series. Uh, it would have been a tie, but uh, Tempo Storm kind of uh, edges out uh, Cloud9 just just by that one game. Yeah, but you All know, guys. I have I have to give some shout out to uh, Team Liquid as well because it looks like Team Liquid can't finish like above or below fifth place at the end of this uh, at the end of this week. So at least we have a good game differential. <laughs> yeah. I did the math there. I did the math there. Trust me okay. on that one. We'll trust you. We'll trust you. Anyway, guys, uh, it's been great. Uh, thank you, Monk. Thank you, Dog. Uh, you guys did great. It was uh, an awesome couple games against uh, against the teams we had today. Um, just before we head off, I uh, want to shout out for the sponsors. Uh, I want to talk about Alpha Draft. Um, if you guys want to uh, check out their site, they're doing um, they're doing a fantasy team, and you can sign in. You can get a bonus upon uh, registering. Um, so you guys can check that out. You guys can bet on your players, and you can tune in tomorrow for. Uh, for some boys and Archon at uh, 10 a.m. PDT. Check it out. Hope you guys had a good time watching the stream tonight, and uh, maybe we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, Dog, for joining us, and uh, yeah. I believe that's pretty much it. Have a good night.